Hello, you're listening to Otaku Spirit Anime Cast. My name is Andrew, and I'm joined here with Chris. Yo. Today's episode is a discussional podcast episode where we talk about the news that seems important to us and dive into our community, answer some great questions from our community members, and then say goodbye. It's been a crazy last few weeks, Chris. The anime uh, industry has completely changed. Okay. Like, right stuff's gone. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> That's one big one. How are you doing, Chris? How, how's the, the, the catch-up going for fall? I was I was actually, like, sort of thinking of doing fall reviews or first impressions now because there's a few shows that are, like, way into them. Like, Farron's, like, six episodes in. Uh, but there's, like, most of the shows are, like, two episodes, so it's a little bit too early. So next week. We'll do next week. I think I had, like, a list of, like, 12 shows that were going to be three-episode point, and a lot of them were today. So it was better to wait. You, know, you don't you don't think that the music episode is 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 due here soon? Yeah, but that takes a long time to put together, and I oh, was okay. nowhere near doing yeah, that. No, no, no music episode. <laughs> Plus, there's y'all still are, a lot of shows that haven't started yet. I mean, we still have a apothecary still has to start this week. Hype, hype, Chris, say hype. Apothecary Diaries coming out. Um, um. As far as how I'm doing catching up, um, I've only had one week, and I've got like several several weeks worth of shows to to like catch up on so no not doing well two weeks three 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 for some shows yes you're you're behind two to three weeks i'm not doing several okay several weeks i'm, I'm weeks not makes... i'm not gonna say i'm doing horribly but i'm no, not the problem is that there's 70 some freaking shows yeah i was like I'm, I'm already at the point now where i'm like okay i want to keep <laughs> for a lot of shows keep for two episodes before i do my first impressions but it's like oh my gosh there's just i i, I come behind. in here and 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 uh lay down on andrew's bed and just wasting a little bit of time before uh before things get moving to get everything going and and andrew pops on what is it undead unlock uh, unluck and and i'm like this has got to be the second episode i'm missing all kinds of setup for this this particular scene so i'm guessing i meant the second episode <laughs> it's a lot of fun yeah third episode is friday so you're way behind that one too yeah a couple days and you're gonna be three episodes behind that one at least you've watched one of them no, I watched part <laughs> of one of them. <laughs> that was mostly the entire. At episode. least, at there least, was like two le- seconds left in the episode before we got up. At least I, I'm, I'm oh, well aware that kind of its gruesome nature is probably not going to bother me. I mean, she seems really cute, and he seems actually kind of fun. So might, might be actually okay with watching that one. It hit me. I was like, it's, it's kind of like Kizu Monogatari that that whole like fight scene where there's just body parts flying around. Mm-hmm. They just keep going. It's like, yeah, that's that's pretty much. Andy. Andy's like that. It is kind of nice to watch that show because she keeps yelling my name. Yeah. Even though I usually go by Andrew. <laughs> well, at, at least they're not using Chris. I, I, there's, there's lots of shows <laughs> that have Chris, Chris yes. but, uh, Chris-y. not very often, do, <laughs> not Chris-y. very often do we get an Andy. That's why they didn't do Andrew. They did Andy instead because Andrew, it just, it doesn't, doesn't work very well. I've tried that. Blue Archive just butchered my name. Anyways, yeah, the news that seems important to us. It should be important to you guys because it's important to us. Oh, before then, yes, Otaku Spirit, that's where we're at. Uh, you can go there, otakuspirit.com. All of our links are there, social media links, ways to get a hold of us, Discord, and all that good stuff uh, on YouTube, youtube.com slash Spirit. But yeah, let's let's dive into any ways to support us, too, like Patreon and stuff like that. So let's dive into it. Are you ready? Ready sure. for some cool news? Let, let's kick off that one a bit. Yes, October 10th. Rip, right stuff. I'm super sad. Like that that was like a not a happy week for me. Uh, truth be told, it was a very not like I was crying to sleep or anything like that. It's just gosh, it's, it's it's one of those things where when it happened, it's like it's coming, but it never really kind of dawned on me and then when the day came, it was like suddenly gut punch. It was like, "Oh yeah, it's, that's today, isn't it?" They had like a timer for like a sale on their website, so they actually had a countdown timer for when it was going to be dead. And it's like, "Yeah, that, that's really sad that right stuff anime is now officially as a brand gone now i i still argue with people that yes technically they're probably shipping out of that that warehouse in grimes iowa is probably still there the people are still there i'm assuming that the marketing team's going to get cut anything that's pretty much doubled up in country rolls company is going to be cut they'll probably get rid of nose of entertainment will probably finish what they're working on or they'll get cut it's just probably gonna be a warehouse like that right stuff is probably just going to turn into the people is the warehouse and everything else is going to be run by Crunchyroll, and that's again, it, it's kind of a sad thing because I mean, like we've mentioned before, like the YouTube channel, like originally was created just for me to unbox right stuff sales for the most part. I mean, figures too, but 
it was like we'd have these Hollywood, like I had like every Christmas, maybe like five videos of like this big massive package comes in and we just unbox it there and you're ripping off the <laughs> the covers and the cellophane while I'm over here showing it off in the camera. Um, just like, it's just kind of that one thing where it's kind of, kind of gone and yeah, just the memories of Sean Kleckner and the penguin outfit dancing and them dropping packages from forklifts. It's just like all that stuff just kind of, it hurts. It kind of hurts. I mean, it was again, inevitability. I knew it was coming ever since the moment they announced the, the buyout, but it still sucks. Well, I, I I can tell you this. I totally didn't set up a shrine in my 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 house that of of right Rights stuff you? stuff. Totally not. It's not oh, like Ritsu. I liked them or nothing. It's <laughs> not, shrine, of, <laughs> shrine of Ritsu. <laughs> I like the penguin. I'm still gonna hold by. I like their penguin mascot more. Ritsu's fine though. But no, I'm uh, legit. Like I have two right stuff holiday uh, or not holiday uh, anniversary t-shirts and i'm like i wonder if i should sell these things in 10 years You're like some nostalgic anime nerds would be like oh crap you got a t-shirt of right stuff yeah or like those old little postcards the little art cards they used to put in all the packages remember, I remember one time i made a bunch of i took all those little art cards you get out of the packages and i just put them in like these little small frames and plastered a wall with them it was kind of funny yeah it's it's sadness though it's, it's true sadness and they're assumingly i mean some people on the discord have been like doing some cross checking to see if the prices are about the same it seemed like it was but i i argue with a lot of people that i think the sales that we have with right stuff especially at the holiday sales it was something that was dying away like i over the last like three or so years i was checking the holiday sale and while i don't buy as much merch as i used to because you know limited income doing the youtube channel and building it up it nothing really like grabbed me like every holiday sale was like two things that would grab my attention now granted bought a lot of junk so i'm already already have like half their warehouse in my, on my walls it's a joke um so it's not like i have like a lot of things that i'm looking out for but it's still something that seems like their holiday sales have been cutting back on and i think it's partly to do with the you know the pandemic and stuff like that and price of packaging going up so the the profit margins are less that's the sales are going to be less but it's still it's still something that i kind of noticed over time that it's just I think the age of right stuff crazy sells is kind of dying. Yeah, there was there was probably strategies involved in what he was doing on the on a lot of that stuff. So I I can see that a they probably didn't quite follow his his mentality on a lot of that stuff. It takes a certain type that can figure out um, the the movement of products. So yeah, he was definitely. Sean Kleckner was definitely pushing this idea and what I kind of seen with those sales, it's a, it's a lot to do with massive, massive quantities, low mm -hmm. profits. Yeah. So it kind of turns out the same. It's like Amazon. Amazon made it big how it is because it's just moving a ton of stuff with low profitability and eventually you'll kill out the competition and you're shipping a ton of crap of stuff every single day. That's just like the whole thing of them just kind of tossing things in boxes. They figure it's better to not have good packaging because you'll... The, the off rare chance that somebody actually does want to send it back, they'll cover that one, but the rest of them they've saved on packaging. Yeah. Um, which is partly one of the things I'm kind of scared of with Crunchyroll. I'm, I'm curious if um, here soon if some people buy stuff from Crunchyroll. If, it, it's always been, it's it's already has been coming out. A lot of the stuff has already been coming out of Right Stuff if you bought it on Crunchyroll Store because they were warehouse. That's why I think they bought Right Stuff because they were already warehousing their stuff. Um, but I'd be curious if they keep to the, the packaging thing because that was literally the goodwill that Sean Kleckner created was this idea that this you buy from right stuff you're buying a collectible mm. whether it's a blu-ray in a standard jewel case or it's a limited edition you're buying something for your collection anime fans are collectors we're not we're not buying a blu-ray of something just because well, we want to watch it once and then sh shove it inside of a cabinet most people are buying cuz they want it in a collection they want it looking good so he knew that and he said, I'm going to put your, I'm, if you buy one Blu-ray, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it in paper and I'm going to shove it inside of a cardboard box and send it to you. If you buy it from Amazon, they're going to stick it inside of a non-padded envelope and send it to you and hope that it makes it there not crushed because it's going to get crushed. Um, he's seen, he, he gained people's goodwill. And that's, I think the biggest, saddest part of it is like they were, I'm not saying that Sean Kleckner was an otaku. He had a lot of stuff that he really enjoyed. He's seen something that was not being served and he served it. So he is an otaku. I'm not sure if he's always been an otaku, but he does have like a lot of old merch and stuff that he was trying to give out and sell. Um, 
so I, I think he's like an old otaku in, in a sense. Yeah. But he still understood otaku. He had and, that passion there. And that, and that's and that's one of those things that it, we had talked about before of of customer goodwill. If if you if you build that up, I mean, you you can have a little bit of leeway on on changing stuff, but mm. I I don't think that um Crunchyroll as a an entity, if you want to call it that, um, they, I think early on, they, 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 they used felt to like have, an otaku company, but then, yeah, they, they used to company. have it, but at some point they, they, they lost that, um, that love for it. And, and now it's, it is mechanical and it is sterile yeah. and it is very, yeah, very metal tasting. <laughs> um, and it, so I don't, it's I don't no longer a tasty, fluffy, crunchy roll. It's now very, it's very metallic. <laughs> and very at some point, I, at some point it will lose that, um, as, as right stuff will, will slowly wane, um, to that, um, unfeeling machine that is crunchy roll eventually it will well I, I shouldn't even say that unfeeling machine that is crunchy roll that it, it's it's now the right hand of uh sony so in all actuality the the that metallic taste is actually sony and you're going to you're going to eventually <laughs> see the this analogy to death <laughs> Yeah, like I agree. It's like we always thought that it had a fluffiness to it, but it has. It's technically always been metallic, but it. I think. I guess it's a good seasoning, because it was like it was always Sony for the longest time, and I think they had a good seasoning on there to keep it, you know, from going too, being too rough on the teeth. I guess. But no, I, I, I still think that bust the, your teeth. It, it, yeah, it's still it's it still hurts. cold metal. It hurts. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I I think there was no way, I. I I threw some ideas at some people the other day. No, it wasn't the other day. It was like, I think it was right after I made my video about um, the closing or maybe I made a tweet or something like that. We were talking on Discord anyways. And I was, I was mentioning the idea of like, it's so, it's so odd how bad some marketing people can be. And I truly honestly believe, you know, no offense to some people, because I, sometimes I do believe it's not necessarily marketing fault. It's that marketing either fails to present it right to the right people or they're not listened to. There's, I've, I've seen a lot of cases of marketing where they're just ignored. They have a great idea and they're ignored. Or they have these ideas, they pass, but these other ideas, which sound really great, are not allowed. And I told a lot of people, I'm like, you know, obviously no matter what, people are going to be mad about this. Again, right stuff, people loved right stuff. They adored right stuff. Did they like Crunchy? When was the last time you talked to somebody and they're like, I love Crunchyroll store. It is such a good store. How many people have you, none. How many people have you heard, I love right stuff? Tons, tons and tons and tons. It's very rare that you can find a store, a company, a storefront, a shop where people are like, I love that store. Like Target, Walmart, <laughs> you know, think of a store that people actually love going to. Um, I think Amazon for a long time was kind of like that back when they were very much um, much so customer first. Now lately it seems like they're not because they're cutting back. But Rice Stuff is loved. And I'm like, what? I, it, it hit me one day and I was like, okay, as we're talking, I'm like, you know, if I was their marketing people, when this whole thing happened, because they just announced it like, October 10th, Rice Stuff is closing. It's all going to Crunchyroll store. Come to Crunchyroll store. It was a very dumb announcement of a transition and it's like yeah. it felt it felt bad nobody's happy about this you know how they could have sold people on this you make a video you tell the team at right stuff make a video like you guys usually do these dumb videos where they have a camera and sometimes the audio is very open it's very tunnel like they used to do this all the time i mean they still they they were they were doing it for the longest time um and have this that have them record a video where they're going through the warehouse and they're like, this is the, this is the, this is the right stuff warehouse. This is where we keep all of our stuff like they always do. Look at all these shelves full of stock and all that kind of stuff. We are now Crunchyroll store. Same people, same warehouse, same service. Just the brand name changed. We're still here for you guys. We're still going to give you the great service we always have. Yeah, pretty much. Put that warehouse in front of the statement, you're going to Crunchyroll store. Let people, like right now, we don't know. I could be wrong. 
October 10th, they could have shut down the Grimes Warehouse. I'm assuming it's still there because that's what they bought. They could have bought them to destroy them. I don't know. Assure people, right stuff is still here. Great service you've always had. Yeah, go into the back area. We're still, we're, the, the salespeople were still here. Marketing people were still here. Show them that, show them basically that right stuff is became in Crunchyroll. That, that, Not that Crunchyroll what, shut down right stuff. Yeah, swallow Because what it looks like right now, and the it, way that they marketed this, they're shutting down right stuff. It doesn't look good. <laughs> but I know why they didn't do it. Somebody made a good point. I think or I made a point. I forget who. Why they didn't do that is because they have a corporate mindset that they're what people want. Yep. The Crunchyroll people made the call in making that announcement. And what are they going to say? They're not going to say, don't worry, everybody. They, I, we know that you love right stuff. They don't care. They're saying, we're the place you're getting your stuff from. We're great. We're not going to admit that we're that you're afraid of coming to us. We want everybody publicly to know we're the new right stuff. They're in love with themselves. It's a very corporate mindset. And it's so dumb how easily that could have been done so perfect. It's, just like, it's like when I thought about that, I'm like, it just that just frustrates me that they had a chance. They had a chance to really sell this. It's a and and, that, and that's one of those sad things. The the problem with that that corporate machine entity whatever you want to call it is that it it balances everything in numbers just like we talked about with the netflix thing just like all the all those things that we've been talking about over the years when we talk about these big talk about things yeah we talk about things once in a while (laughs) um it, it it's it's one of those things that all they do is they balance numbers are we going to lose lose people this way or that people that way how are how many how can we lose the least amount of people um Yes, you should be looking at how can we, I, because but every everybody's got this upside down mindset. It, it should be about how can we service the customers better. How can we increase the value to the customers? How can we, um, how can we, like Andrew was talking about, it, it, how can we let customers know that right stuff is going to be taken care of they are the ones that are in control of your packaging Mm -hmm. that's what they should be selling we purchased this company so that they can control your packaging so that when you purchase an item from us always taken care of you and we're going to do the same thing that's what they should be capitalizing yeah they are not instead it's that that lack of in but is it narcissism to themselves that they're better than right stuff and they want you to know that they're the place? Or do you think it is an aspect of them not seeing that that is – that not seeing that people are – up that are, are afraid of this? They obviously see that we're afraid, uh, upset at this. But why not realize how easily you could have appeased people with this? That's the thing that doesn't – that boggles my mind. It's so easy. Like, I came up with it. I mean, again, yes, granted, I used to work with marketing people for several years. I know how marketing people think in a sense. But this is, this seems easy. Like, this seems so easy that I came up with it. And I haven't, I didn't go to college for marketing and I figured out how easy. But again, isn't that because, oh, that's right. I'm a fan of this stuff. So I understand how fans think. Whereas their people... Oh, that's right. They're not fans. They don't care about anime. They don't, they don't care about who the, they don't care about who they're serving. They're so disconnected, and that's what kind of is a sad thing. Yeah, is to realize how disconnected they are. They can't figure out something this simple. But it could, again, I, I admit, it could be that the higher ups don't allow the marketing to do what they need to do and to appease the fans. I fully acknowledge that. Sorry, marketing people. <laughs> I know sometimes your arms are, your hands are tied. It's dumb. It's dumb. It's just, it's just, that's just like uncensored stuff. Um, when they when they get licenses and they end up being censored, it's like there's so many easy ways you can market that stuff and and appease people. Like be clear about what you got. Be clear that you only cut, you could only get one license. Be clear why you're you know why this show is showing aired in Japan, but you don't have it on your network yet because they have an exclusivity on a streaming platform in Japan. Be clear. Just say it. Like, it, instead, it just turns into a bunch of negativity. It's like, it's, this could so easily be... And yes, I, I agree with part of that is because people love hating on Crunchyroll. 
And I fully admit, I mean, we have a, if we ever get to it, uh, we have an article that came up over the last couple weeks where people were just dunking on them because it's just a fun thing to do. People love hating Crunchyroll. And I will sp I'll be the first to speak up whenever I think it's people being negative for the sake of being negative. Like, I, I can give Crunchyroll some pass here and there. But... It makes it hard sometimes. It's frustrating because I've I a lot of my goodwill for Crunchyroll has waned a lot over the years. Mm -hmm. I mean, shoot, when I when we first started this podcast, I I was shouting from the root. I loved Crunchyroll. I really did. I was one of the first ones when they started doing their shipping stuff. I was the one of the first ones on board, and I tried to do a lot of that stuff. At some point, me and Andrew had, had gotten to the point where it was like. No, we're done with this because it just takes too long. Uh, they, they're trying yeah, to... I mean, they're, they're like Tokyo to... Takuma where they take like an extra six months after it releases in Japan. Yeah. Because they put it on a tugboat and it <laughs> goes across the ocean so they can save on shipping. And it and it, and it, it was frustrating, but it is what it is. Now, on their... I still was very, very adamant about their, their streaming service and because they they were really the the best out there. Now I I I don't much care for them anymore. I, it's it's I use them. I still use their service. I it's on my Roku. I I do still use their service, but I don't care for them anymore. And that's you frustrating. The, you hear they they decided to do a twenty four hour television shot. Did they? <laughs> yes, they're gonna do the whole thing where they have a schedule of what shows are gonna air, what episodes on each day. And are like, you I, sure they're not listening I, to me? I still don't get it. I still don't get why we're so backwards thinking that people are going to want to turn on something and get some random episode of a random show at episode six rather I, than just select it and start watching it. I would. I understand think, the idea of background noise, but it's, yeah. it's like turn on background. Just replay a show you like in the background. Of course, it's distracting. I, every time I do that, I end up watching the show. I'm like, oh, let me just throw Onimai on the background, sits and watches it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't get anything cleaned. I can't do that. I just can't do it. Uh, I did it once with... Um, I think it was uh, Unlimited Blade Works, and I'm like, at some point, I just sat down and started watching it. It's bad. Background noise is bad. Now, the sad thing is, like, after the official closure, a lot of people obviously looking for, like, where to go next. Because I, I think that Crunchyroll has already kind of burned a lot of bridges for a lot of people in their storefront. So it's, it's obvious that people are going to be like, no, that's that's fine. I'm not going to... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not moving over. <laughs> I, I'd be very curious how many people are just kind of like shrug, whatever. I'll just buy from right, uh, Crunchyroll store now. Or how many people are just kind of like looking for ever, you know, anywhere else. And honestly, the first thing that comes to my mind is buyanime.com, which was the arrowanime.com site that they moved all the 18 plus over, stuff over to. They've been building it up. They, they rebranded it to buy anime. I'm not sure. I'm sure the arrow anime URL still works, uh, but they're branded now as buyanime.com. And I've reached out to them. I haven't got a reply. That's not very positive. But I am reaching out to them because I'm kind of curious. I'm I'm very curious how much of Buy Anime is previous right stuff. They're in Nevada. So they're not in Iowa. Now their site says their contact is Nevada. That could be their headquarters. Maybe they're still in Grimes or something. But I'd be very curious to see if I can prod them to find out how much of them is right stuff. Because if they do, it looks like a lot of their stuff is not stocked yet. They're like, I guess they're they're building up their stock, but they're they have a ton of listing of light novels and stuff like that. It it feels like they're trying to be essentially write stuff, um, write stuff before Sony bought them and they took all their R eighteen stuff off. <laughs> they need to kind of, I, I think, for them to build up. I mean, it's fine them being a naughty store that has all the naughty stuff, but I think if they want to build up like write stuff was. They'll have to back. They'll have to back that stuff out. Like, put it in the back. You don't have to have that stuff at the. When you go to buyanime.com, you don't need to see a bunch of, you know, R18 stuff all over the, your face, because your broader audience is going to get pushed away. You can still have a button there that says R18 stuff. That's fine. I'm not saying take that stuff off the site like Right Stuff did eventually. Just put up the front that this is going to be the new storefront for your anime goods. I kind of want to get in contact with them so I can find out what they're. What their plans are. I really want to. I really want to sit down and talk with them and ask them a bunch of questions because I'd love to know if this could be the next right stuff. Yes, they're still Tokyo Taku mode, but they're more imports and stuff like that. Yes, there's Amazon.com. 
yes, there's um, a Barnes and Noble if you want light novels and uh, manga. Uh, but I think there needs to be a right stuff because even with Amazon, they 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 delist a lot of certain manga and light novels. And I'm not sure how Barnes and Nobles is. I haven't heard any hubbub about them uh, delisting stuff, but I would assume that yeah, if somebody pointed something out, they're going to delist it. And because Barnes and Nobles isn't that big, I choose Barnes and Nobles right now, and I was doing it towards the later part of Right Stuff, even so, because they ship things separately. So you can pre-order like everything that you you're going to want to eventually read. Like I did all the Mushoku Tensei uh, series and stuff, and um, Norgami and Grimgar. And they'll ship it as they come in. If you hit them on a pre-order sale, it's it's super cheap. So that's been my go-to. But yeah, for like anime and like things in general, I'd like to see if buy anime can be that replacement. Because again, I'm pretty sure that it, there has to be somebody at them. least. Because remember when, we, when that first happened? When they first pulled the when the buy hop out first happened, and we were talking about Ero anime. Mm -hmm. Remember what our, our our assumption was that somebody. This, this has got to be somebody that Sean Collector knows. If Sean Collector is not directly involved, maybe he talked to somebody about, hey, we're about to get bought out by Sony and they don't want this stuff in here. Can you open up... Do you have a warehouse over in, you know, that you can store this stuff and open up a storefront? Okay. The I'm sure it's somebody that's involved with Sean Collector and I want to meet... I want to find out more about them. I would suspect he has a... Um... I don't know how to explain this. It's It's basically a transportation network. And he oh, yeah. pro and they probably took the big headquarters, but he's got his branches out there, and he probably just sent them uh, one of his main heads. You go ahead and do your own thing that he has a contract with, and he just sent his stuff over there. If, I know a lot went. of people that have w warehouses. Are, I mean, it was a it was the same case with my last job. There's certain people in certain areas that. How they do make their livings is literally just warehouses. Mm -hmm. And I can see him being somebody that possibly has other warehouses that he owns and makes money off of the right. essentially people being in there. Or, yes, a network. He's obviously got a network. He's Yeah, he's doing transportation. He's moving goods left and right. He obviously knows people. But, I'm again, I'm, I'm curious how connected that person is to Sean Kleckner because it couldn't be directly involved because you know for a fact when they bought out Right stuff. He had to sign a non, uh, non compete, right. especially since he's left non compete. So it's got to be somebody else. And again, I'm, I'm very curious of how connected they are. Sean Kleckner's retired. Well, that's he's, why he's, I was, he's, he's retired. He's yeah. and he probably is. He could be making money off of warehousing. And that's why I was saying more probably more along the lines of contracting, or he just was keeping the R18 stuff separate from the right stuff stuff catalog so that when it did actually go through um it didn't really go into the non-compete stuff because technically it wasn't in the same category yeah, i am very curious about that yeah like when when the sony buyout happened was it were they literally like just move everything move move some of these things over in this <laughs> it, it, it that's how it literally felt because when they when they did the first and you know they were building this up for a while um, it's probably a good two years they were probably talking to Sean Kleckner before the official announcement last year that they bought him. Um, but you know that there had been like some weird writing in there like, we want you to get rid of that nasty stuff. Like it literally felt like that yeah, when they announced it because they're like, it's are... off. It was literally, boom, that stuff disappeared off their catalog quick. They were ready for that. It's like, is that is that like it's just a stain you can't touch? Like it's 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 cooties? So like, crude. Like they they didn't even say like we're buying it. You know we're gonna give you like another because they were doing the they were doing the sale at the same time. It's like it was so like we can't have that. We can't have our name on right stuff until that stuff's out of there because that'll be controversial for us. We bought a company that had lewd stuff in it. Again, still go back to crunchyworld.com, go to uh, search and search for my student council, my wife is student council president. It's like you guys have such worse stuff on your website that you're streaming right now. And this is what's bad. It's so weird. It is so weird. It is so weird. Um, but yeah, I do want to look into buyanime.com. I'm not, I'm not, um, saying people go buy from them or anything like that. I'm saying oh, no. I want to, I look absolutely into it. believe I want, that I want to find. I want to find a company to champion. Yeah. 
It's I I absolutely because believe. obviously Crunchyroll is not going to do business with me anymore. I got an email from Right Stuff, my rep at Right Stuff, and they're like, "Yeah, we're of course you know we're transitioning off. You probably know this, um, so we're gonna have to we're we're closing down the Right Stuff uh, affiliate program. Um, thanks for working with us, and we're gonna build a new affiliate program with Crunchyroll." And I'm like, I literally emailed him. It's been great working with you. Um, take care. <laughs> it's like I it was literally like I I didn't word it exactly that way, but the way I worded it, I was obviously saying it's been great. But we all both know you're not gonna do. You're not contacting me when you go to Crunchyroll. Don't act like you're gonna get in contact with me once you go over there. Um, it was obvious, and I mean, it, it, there was a side of me that was also feeling like how it was worded. It was also the, his way of saying like. Because they probably could have put in there, you know, I'll contact you soon enough about, you know, possibly getting that program. It was literally, it was it was good working with you. It, it, we're not doing this no more. <laughs> and I think it was all because that stupid, like, viral video I made about Crunchyroll games. It's like, I think I made them super bitter about that. <laughs> but I, like I've told a lot of people, I don't I don't really care anymore. I mean, I don't, I don't want to burn bridges. And like I said, I, I defend Crunchyroll a lot. We, I mean, I, yeah, we've, I defend we've them been... here recently with that whole... Um, class action lawsuit everybody was making videos saying crunchyroll stealing your data and i'm like literally look at the articles and the lawsuit nothing says that anything was proven it was settled settled means it never went to court <laughs> it was in the court systems obviously because they have to once you make the settlement they make sure it's enforced but it wasn't like they lost a lawsuit they settled i defend crunchyroll when i have when when i think people are wrong but at the same time, they don't pay my bills. So it's not like I'm going to go out of my way to kiss their butts. I mean, if they do something stupid like with Crunchyroll Games and Precon, yeah, I'm going to call them out. And I told them the same thing when they emailed me about that. I guess that's out the bag, but again, it's technically already out there. They When they emailed, about, emailed me about that video, it was like, again, they were nice about it. They were very respectful about it. They said, we respect your opinion. We res not respect my opinion. We respect your rights to say what you say. But they're like, this kind of does put us in a pickle is basically how they said it and i'm like i mean that's fine but i mean here's all my other videos where i defend them but when they do something that i don't appreciate which that was literally the worst that i can think of i'm gonna call them out on it it makes sense so and they respect that again so i i respect them for at least being open about that kind of stuff but again if, if something happens it's, it's i'm gonna i'm gonna bring it up i'm not gonna be Stupid, like a lot of people are, where the it, if if somebody at Crunchyroll sneezes, you make a video about how they're killing dolphins. But at the same time, I'm not gonna hold back when they do something wrong. Did they sneeze and kill a dolphin? I heard. I've heard. Um, it was couple, probably on one of those leak dot coms, huh? Yeah, um, gotcha. it's on Twitter, I think. Yeah. Sorry, X dot com. <laughs> but no, like I said, uh, I recommend for right now. If you're looking for light so light novels and manga, probably Barnes and Noble. Um, if you're looking for anime in general, I don't know. I I mean I don't I don't think necessarily like Crunch Crunchyroll Store is that bad. Um, I mean I I, I haven't had terrible service with them, but that, there was a couple things that we've gotten from there that didn't work out very well. Massive delays or damaged goods. I think they were pretty good about replacements, but I think that was back when it was still kind of like Funimation slash Crunchyroll. And 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna head it off at the pass. If anybody is kickstarting a new right stuff system, don't jump on board right now. Just wait, wait. I, Somebody is, will naturally so, come up. <laughs> that is actually a true thing. That is like so <sighs> weird. Whenever something like this happens, and it's like, yeah, you'll have the people comes out and says. It, it's literally like their campaign on the day of the death, and it's just like, yeah. Sad about right stuff being gone. Don't go to those other guys. Come to us. We're doing it right. And they just, they fumble it so bad. Yeah, I can see that like three stores popping up. Then you're you're buying stuff from them and you, it just comes in like, they literally just take the Blu-ray and just slap the label on it. <laughs> they just slap the shipping label on a Blu-ray and ship it to you. Yeah. We're, we're doing the right stuff. <laughs> you know, you're doing it completely wrong. Um... But I mean, that's a, that's a whole idea of like them just not really realizing again what made right stuff special. So, anyways, anything else on that? Thank you, Sean Kleckner, for creating a really amazing store and 
Um, I am, I, as I said, when they sold it, I said, best wishes to him. I mean, he's, he's devoted himself to that for a long time and he wanted to go on another thing. So I don't, I don't hate him for it. He wanted to ride into the sunset. Yeah. He wanted to, wanted to pass it off. And, and I do think it's kind of like with the whole key, uh, key studios sell or visual art sells to Tencent. It's like, it's that aspect of like, you do, you do see that there's a little bit of it that they don't. They want to leave, but at the same time, they don't want it to fall apart as they walk out the door. And so they wanted to give it to a company that will keep it alive. But I don't trust big corporations to keep things alive like that. <laughs> one mean, of these days, like, one of these days, I will get you completely over to my side and we will trust no one. He's like walking out the door and he's like, at least you got a job for another year. <laughs> at least a year. So just be on the lookout. Might want to start making <laughs> just, that resume, sending it a, out. <laughs> just put your posting up there. See if somebody will pick up a LinkedIn or something like this. Get your picture posting up there so somebody, if somebody chirps at you, jump at it. Uh, you got one year. I gave you guys, I gave you guys enough for one year. Um, yeah, it's, it's sad. Anyways, we're going for depressing stuff. What else do we have for news? I don't know. We're we're like what uh, forty minutes in. I I get. I assume that there's going to be a long introduction, but yeah. Uh, some other news. A website was open to announce a TV anime adaptation of Chillin' in Another World with level two super cheap powers. Uh, this one is going to premiere in 2024. The magical kingdom of Kiro Day summons hundreds of heroes from another world every year to fight the war against the dark. That sucks. They just got like a whole like assembly line. Uh, he looks like the slime dude. He had that whole like display system coming up in front of him. Don't oh, bash, don't keep bash this show. We got keep outs. This is going to be it. This is going to be a super censored show. <laughs> it's got don't. the big massive keep out lines. Don't bash this show. It's got a cute uh, wolf girl. Yeah, and, they, and, and so obviously and it's gonna censored. be it's gonna be the best show ever. I wonder like if this is labeled as an etchy show and it's gonna have two versions. This is this is totally gonna have two versions. And she's silver hair. It's ben, freaking gonna make it awesome. Bonaza, Bonaza is one of the heroes summoned from the royal capital Pol, uh, Paluma, but something is not right. Bonaza, this is a stupid name by the way. I, I'm I'm gonna hate hearing characters say "Hey, Bonaza," <laughs> is only an average merchant. Uh, he was he has no magic, no fighting ability, and his stats are abysmal. Which that's a very common thing, actually. I don't know why they're acting like it's rare. Uh, worse, a mishap leaves him unable to return home, rejected as a hero, and stranded in another world, abandoned to the far reaches of the kingdom by a cruel king who just wants him gone. Banaza's fate looks pretty bleak. But what will happen once the failed hero candidate finds himself with a super cheap power? Once he hits level two, <laughs> that's what it is. He's literally level one. He got nothing, and he hits level two, and he's super cheap. He's cheating. What's it? What? What do you think his power is going to be? To tame? Probably to tame the 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 cute uh, silver hair wolf girl. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, it's an, oh, I'm guessing his real name is Banaza. Oh, his, yeah, his real name is Banaza. They're going to call him Fleo. Apparently, his name's Fleo. Finries, I like that. Instead of Finrir, her name it's Rika Jimia. I want to love this show. I should have listened to this preview beforehand. No, you can't Rika jump Jimia? on board. No, you Rika can't. Rika Jimia is finally you getting like a decently main role for once. You I can't, thought she retired. <laughs> you can't just randomly jump on board after you start seeing the voice cast. Hey, no. Hey, Chris, guess what? Just did. <laughs> Anyways, Katakawa revealed that private tutor to the Duke's daughter anime adaptation. Um, I was looking forward to this one. Actually, I have no clue what it is. I'm just saying that. Uh, after fail uh, after failing the exam for the dream job at the royal court, promising young sorcerer Alan wants nothing more than to retreat to a simple life in the countryside. Unfortunately for him. He can't even afford to train the train fare. His only solution is to get a job, but his one lead is anything but modest. Duke Howard, one of the kingdom's most powerful nobles, needs him to needs a private tutor for his daughter Tina. Despite her academic brilliance, Tina is incapable of casting even the singles even a single spell. To make matters worse, entry exam entrance exams for the prestigious Royal Academy are fast approaching, and magical aptitude is a mandatory. Can Alan use his unique brand of spellcasting to help Tina overcome her magical impairment? A mystery that's not even a kingdom's finest sorcerers have been able to solve? 
And does her father, the Duke, even want him to? It's a lot of questions at the end of that. I love synopsis that literally give you 50 question marks at the end of it. Like, you could have just told These me. These are the things that you're supposed to be you're asking yourself. Be... <laughs> Why don't you create... Hey, she looks cute. Why don't you create a very interesting synopsis rather than make me have to question things? Like, you should be wondering this. If you if you cared at all, you'd want to know what this answer is. Um, which basically tells you that, that those are going to be problems that they're going to run into. So you're saying it anyways. She looks cute, though. I like the artwork. I know the anime is probably not going to look anything like the artwork. But yeah, excited for that one? Sure. Sure. She seems kind of cute. There you go. There you go. The synopsis is kind of blah. I, I have to... <laughs> oh, Chris, are you excited? Dude needs to make money. And so Chris? instead of going going the bad route, he decided to go ahead and train a, a cute girl. And the cute girl sucks at everything. And we find out that the the daddy is a bad guy. So <laughs> he's a I bad mean, guy because he doesn't want her to actually <laughs> learn how to do spells. Are you excited, Chris? Cheat skills coming back. I don't remember. Did you hit. ever finish that oh, show? Oh yeah, I, I like I like cheat skill. <laughs> it just it, had some bad some bad frames. I mean, what, I mean, what, some what, bad what? frames. <laughs> just a few. Hundred thousand bad frames. <laughs> Just a, a few bad frames. thousand, hundred thousand bad frames. Um, yeah. I'm. I. I. Andrew. Andrew seemed I've didn't like the fact accept. that these girls didn't had had no brain power. So we have that going. For no, me. that was the funniest thing about the show was that literally I could identify each girl by just there's like not what they do or their name. It's just I literally identify them as. Is Stupid, the hot, stupider, the hot and model. Stupidest? No, the hot model, the assassin girl. Like I, I had no care to learn their names because okay, there's nothing okay. to let, them. Let, but let me, let me, let me, let me go ahead and open up an old wound. Princess, <laughs> stupid princess. <laughs> this is, she's literally right there, Chris. She's on the screen. <laughs> the stupid princess that'll drag her men out into the middle of a deadly forest. Yeah, I, I told you. I told you. I opened up boyfriend. that old wound. Oh gosh, the show's so bad. <laughs> and the karate <laughs> rabbit. Oh yeah, and the princess's brother that I hey, I still the karate rabbit out. was kind of cool. I still haven't figured out the whole arrow shot in that one room when they were freeing the prince. I still don't know what happened in that room. To this day, I still don't know what happened in that room. I thought that they were trying to kill the prince, but apparently not. Nobody ended up hurt, so I assume the arrow did nothing. I don't know. It's weird. The whole show's weird. But that's right. We have a second season. We get to we get to hang out with the new cute uh, magical lolly that was trying to destroy the world from the first season. Yeah, and and, and his and his friend who decided to go through his door, and he, she should not have gone through his door. He was pretty shrug about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's right. The friend came through. Yeah, he didn't really care. It was just like a <laughs> shrug. Hey, stay over there while I go fight this butt. Uh, fight this chick. And that's she did the not follow orders at all. Yeah, she, she, came over she there. still wanted to come over there. I gotta come over here because I'm gonna do something. <laughs> I gotta stand here and get protected, and then swoon over him protecting me from magic. Uh, not only do I get swooned over the fact that he beat up a bunch of bullies next to a store, now I can swoon over the fact that he beat some crazy uh, psycho magical lolly in front of me. His his harem is now officially at what five now. Or six. Well, do you count the the the, the bros? <laughs> it, it depends on if we're we're counting <laughs> the we, brother. Do we count the bros? Yeah, the brother and the bros at the school. I think everybody loves them. So, I don't know. I think the entire kingdom's and uh, got the hots for them now. So I don't know. But yeah, there, there's your CGI uh, CGI armored soldier guy with 2D sliding stills. Uh, he's coming back for another season. Hopefully he doesn't stand in front of her door for five minutes holding his hand out like he's gonna go knock on the door and look surprised. Hopefully the animation goes up. I'm going to highly... I'm going to put a massive doubt button on that one. Anyways, moving on. Uh, Anchor has announced that they're going to be launching a crowdfunding campaign in order to do an English release of uh, Nozomu Ayin... Uh, Kimi ga Nozomu Ayin game. So, that's pretty exciting. Um, I never... I, I think I, I watched the anime adaptation of it a long time ago. But I don't know that I've ever heard anybody talk about the the actual visual novel if it was any good. But I don't know if you're if you're looking for Kim Nozo, the 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 visual novel, be on the lookout for that. It's going to start on October twenty first. 
I don't know if they've announced the actual platform they're going to be doing the ca the crowdfunding campaign at, but they're looking for $201,000 USD, which is like 30 million yen. So by December 29th, and they'll be launching on the 21st. So we'll see. That's that's, that's cool. Always always good to, to see those games come back and get another another shot at release. Those older visual novels. Waiting for the uh, <coughs> Fate, Fate Stay Night. <laughs> When right? When is that? When is that ever gonna happen? It's like you would think. I mean, we've talked about this a couple times before, but it's like it's. Do you think with how massive fate is, fate grand order? There, there's got to be the something. Works. There's got to be something. Is as this far just strictly as... the the naughty stuff? But because the, they can sense. No, that I, stuff. I'm almost. Version, I'm almost convinced that there is some kind of a lockdown on it. There's got to be somebody, like a producer, that doesn't want to do it. Either that or somebody has the license in the West already and is not using it. We would probably, you think we'd probably know by now. You would think, you would think there's got to be something going on. There, There's no way that these people have not considered how much money that, that franchise is worth over here. I think somebody licensed it was going to, was going to translate and then just kind of fell died the crack. yeah <laughs> somebody I, just I, died so, it, something is not right there, you, there's no way i mean we've been talking about this for what 10 years but i the, but i mean the, i think there's probably enough companies out there that have contacted them about licensing that somebody would at least have that's told what i'm somebody saying. no okay what, what i mean is like somebody over here you know thousands of companies not thousands i was like hundreds of companies over here have had some point where they contacted type moon or whatever and said I want to license this, and they respond by saying it's already licensed over there. I can't give it out to somebody else. And then they would probably they probably let it be known to public that yeah, they told us that somebody has it already. So I I don't imagine that it's somebody has a license already, unless they're for some reason they wouldn't disclose it, which I don't think I don't know why they would. It's gotta be it's gotta be somebody somebody has partial ownership of the visual novel, and they don't want to have anything to do with licensing it out. That's the only thing I can think of. It's well, there is the the aspect you know, of Sekai Project probably tried, you know, for damn sure they probably tried. Yeah, that's what I mean. There's something, something is not right. There's no way, <laughs> they, not right. They, I mean, they have to know how much. Now, this is where I am leaning. They might know how much that val it, it is valued at, and they're asking an absurd amount. For I it. think that's what we the conclusion we came to last time we talked about this because I remember that. Which I can agree, uh, but just because the the anything fate is just so massively expensive that I would imagine that a lot of that stuff is is probably to do with the cost. So it's just weird. It's super weird, and it's it is, it is one of those things where you almost and I can argue there's probably a side of it that they don't want to license it out to somebody because they might mess it up. They might mess up the translation, but it, it is one of those things where it's like, why would you not want to? Just let it get out there, just so that your fans across the the globe can actually experience it. Or is it a possibility they just know that anybody that wants to read it's already read it? Like they, yeah, they, it's been pirated for so long, they all have watched it. So it's not like we're going to keep it from the fans because the fans already wa already pirated it. Well, and and that's what sucks is it there there is those and that's a I negative mean, effect have... to those that don't want to pirate it. Yeah, exactly. That's the true fans, in my opinion. <laughs> not joking. <laughs> I'm joking. If you fired it, I don't care. I mean, technically, I bought the entire uh, uh, Mask series, and I I have not played it, but I bought the entire Mask series. Why? Because I really, really love that franchise. I It's not like I... Whether or not I'll play the dang uh, Fate series, I will probably buy it if it ever comes out. The Mask series? Yeah, uh, Hakuro. Oh, it's what I'm gonna know. Oh, okay. Yeah. I bought the entire freaking series yeah one of these days i'll play it i haven't wanted to do that but it is what it is it time. was on sale yeah i remember i i've seen it and i i failed to do it but yeah well, anyways, if you that, want that's, it let me know i you, that's there you can get it on my account friend sharing uh this is pretty big family news. Did you share. hear about the new I dragon ball friend share huh did you hear about the new dragon ball coming out i don't know you had a dragon ball thing on one of your videos i haven't gotten to look at that one yet <laughs> I literally made a video on this announcement, and then I immediately 
deleted the video off of YouTube before I even published it, and I re-exported it without images because I remembered. Oh yeah, that's right, it's Toei. <laughs> it's like I'm not putting I'm not putting screenshots in my video when it's Toei. That's that's playing with fire. Uh, but yeah, Toei Animation has announced that Dragon Ball will be getting a new series, Dragon Ball Daima. It's a new series by Akira Toriyama. It is not. It's going to be an original series, like a side project that he's going to be very invested with, apparently. They want you to know, by the way, Akira Toriyama is going to be very involved, Chris. Hey, Chris, look at look at me. Akira Toriyama is going to be involved with this time. Because why? They got characters that are all kids again. <laughs> I know that, I know for a fact they were, they were very much so clear and adamant. By the way, Akira Toriyama is going to be involved. This is not, this is not GT again. Please, please watch the show. <laughs> But no, it, uh, yeah, Kira Toriyama is going to be very closely involved. He's stated, uh, hello, uh, I'm currently working on a new Dragon Ball. The title is Dragon Ball Daima. Daima is a made-up term which, uh, with Japanese characters, you know, or in English would be something like evil. Due to, to, due to a conspiracy, Goku and his friends are turned small. In order to fix things, they'll head off to a new world. It's a grand adventure with intense action and an unknown... And, in an unknown and mysterious world. Since Goku has to make up for his petite size, he will be using Nimbo again, his power pole, to fight. Uh, something not seen in a long time. I came up with the story and setting, as well as a lot of the designs. I'm actually putting a lot of effort into this as usual, or more effort into this than usual. Uh, things uh, will unfold that will close in on the mysteries of the Dragon Ball world. Hope you will enjoy this uh, different from usual battles and cute uh, that that are that are cute and powerful, so. Yeah, I uh, I have to admit, I like the PV. I was gonna say I don't understand why, why why is this bad. Do you know why I like this PV, Chris? Look at this, Chris. Look at this, Chris. Is 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 drawn again? <laughs> they're, they're not using. All, there is CGI in there, uh, like the spaceship and. And all that kind of... There's a, a couple points in there that's uh, CGI. But for the most part, it's, it's 2D animation. And I'm like, oh my gosh. If they're... If they're going to give me like a 2D animated show again, I, I don't care what the story is about. Please give me Dragon Ball with 2D animation again. <laughs> it, it's a simple thing sometimes for me, okay? Um, but yeah, I was super, super hyped for that. But yeah, I, I think obviously the big concern that a lot of people have, and I kind of talked about in my video, is this idea that... Yes, um, Dragon Ball GT, for those who don't know, they did Dragon Ball Z, and then when they got the Dragon Ball GT, that was where the studio and the producers decided to go original because they ran out of manga to adapt. So, obviously, with GT, GT Story, they had Goku become a kid again. And so, obviously, when people see this, they immediately go, crap, it's GT again. That's why they were emphasizing that Kira Toriyama is involved. But yes, the opposite, the other issue that a lot of people have here is that they're not continuing the Dragon Ball Super Story they're doing this side story. And a lot of people were wanting them to continue adapting the super story. So I, 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 I didn't really have a problem with GT. I, I really need to go and I finish like it. GT. Yeah. I, I, I thought I was, it was better than super. I'm sorry. I said it. I I'm sorry. They, I said it. I think that they ran into an issue of, um, at least what they've adapted levels. so far with super. I, I still that's think exactly that's my problem. Yes. I still think that that's the biggest problem that they have with this, this show is that they, they run into an issue of power levels. You're talking about literally gods. And that's what and I was kind of arguing is like with, with Su Dragon Ball super, it's literally gods fighting gods. What's the point in having Piccolo next to them? What's the point in bringing anybody else in the picture? Because they're, they're just going to be fighting people that aren't gods. But for the most part, it's about the gods fighting each other, pretty much in a sense. God power people. Um, I completely agree. And that's and that's exactly what I seen GT as is that it was a reset point, and yeah. and it and it it there was at least what I had gotten into it. It was some fun, really cool concepts, and I really liked that. Um, but I never, like I said, I never really had a problem with what they did with GT. I, I mean. But hey, I'm I mean, not there was everybody. some slow points. I really like the um, the new designs of like the Super Saiyan J4 Goku and stuff like that. I think they were super. They are there, yeah. <laughs> right there. Looks super good. Um, it's kind of like that whole mixture of like ape and and like Super Saiyan. It's super cool looking. Uh, yeah, and that was the other thing is that they. I think he kind of wanted to do something with that tail thing. The the, yeah. the whole. Come and, bring it back. Yeah. 
But I mean, I, I, I definitely agree with you because that's been my issue with definitely with Super is just it's getting too much. Like there's too much power. Um, and I do think that's probably what he's going for with the stories. I think there's two reasons why he's doing Daima. One on one end, I think it's so they can oh, that CGI. <laughs> CGI is so nasty looking. Um, I think it was fine. I think it was fine in Broly, Super Broly. But yeah, I had I like had zero interest in watching um, superhero. I, I will, I'll watch it eventually. I'm gonna watch it. But anyways, I, I think there is a part of it that they want to do Daima. Or he wants to do Daima specifically because it's a, it's a reset essentially. Everybody's yep. gonna be weaker because they're children. He's even got to use his power pole again, which is very much so uh, nostalgic. He's, it's it's a for, what fortieth anniversary, so it's it, there's a tie in there with the idea of them going back to the original. Dra he looks like the original Goku from Dragon Ball. Like we're yeah. going back to the original. Uh, it timeline is Dragon Ball, not Dragon yeah. Ball Z. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> um, and I think there's also part of the season they're probably trying to introduce a new audience of children into the franchise. You know, bring in the younger audience with this, with Goku and everybody being fun and chibi, and he's mentioning that it's going to be cute. They could be an aspect of them just trying to draw in another audience. I mean, there's could be a, other, a lot of af, uh, facets to this. And if it's him that's writing and everything, he can do whatever he wants to do with the project. I mean, he could be being pulled into it by, you know, Toei and stuff to, to force him to do something like this to bring in a younger audience. And he doesn't want to do it, but he's going to say that he wants to do it anyways. But um, yeah, 40th anniversary. I, I'm fine with it. Again, I, I think it looks great. Um, again, mainly because it's 2D again. The characters look fantastic. It's got a lot of good art to it, so... I'll be I'll be looking forward to it. fall of next year. Year away. There you go. We'll be watching another Dragon Ball TV series again. It's been like forever. It's it's been since yeah, Super pretty much came to a, a stop at some point. I never again they did the movie with Superhero and I never watched it, so I'll have to watch that before this comes out. Not that I'm I'm gonna probably need to. But yeah, cool stuff, cool stuff. Looking looking forward to it. What else do we got? Um, let's see. It's toy. Blah, 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 blah. Official website for I'll Become the Villainous that will go down in history has announced that it's going to be a 2024 premiere. I don't know if we've actually talked about this one at all. Story all follows right. a girl named Alicia who hates goody two shoes heroines. Yeah, that's right. Her wish is to come the tr <laughs> comes true when she gets reincarnated as a villainous in her favorite Atomic games. Uh, she strike and it games. Reincarnated into a uh, into a into a villainous in her favorite Atomic games. I wonder if it's a series or if it's like different games because the PV the, the key art looks like there's different characters. So I wonder if she's going to jump around different games. Uh, she strives to become the world's most evil villainous in history. However, the more she tries to be a villainous, the more the prince appears to like her. No, that's going to be a single one. I remember we talked about that. That'd be funny. Did you hear about the Yuzuki family thing? Did you watch Yuzuki family yet? No. Oh, uh, I I I. I want to say either you told me or yeah, I mean, we talked about it last week. That was bad. <laughs> it was bad. But yes, for those who don't know, Yuzuki uh, family, uh, Yuzuki, the Yuzuki family's four sons. I don't know why that that name fl slipped me out so mad. Uh, their first episode came out, and in, the, the subtitles were bad. Like they were super bad. Um, I made a video on it, posted a lot of screenshots of it. It's basically like a lot of. It's very rough translations, very, very rough translation. And the bigger problem that came from it was that a lot of the, a lot of the terms for self or others was just like all mixed up. So like the easy example is that one of the sons goes out into the street, runs to the neighbor and he's grouchy looking. And she immediately turns to him and says something like to the effect of, are you okay? Or something like that. I'm really, gr um, I, I look really angry in the morning. And it's like, no, she's supposed to be saying you're looking very angry in the morning. It's like every time it was like somebody referencing somebody else, it was always getting mixed up. It was a really bad translation. Uh, it was, it was watchable, but it was, it was tough. It was really tough. You know, I, the entire time I was listening to your video on this, I was, I was sitting there, I was going, you know, what really irritates me is that the fact that technically it's one of those, oh, so you guys think that you want auto translators, huh? You <laughs> and, and so they put out this really garbage, about that, yeah. e, this really garbage translation just to tick test, us off. Test the test, test the waters. And, well, no, not even test, to test the, the waters. Just to say, look, you all really don't want this as much as you. No, yeah, there we is some do. People, there are some people that are like, I'd rather to have a machine translation than translators. I do. 
I honestly do. I I, I, think, I think if anything, they used a really bad. I think that they did. I almost think they did it on purpose. I it it this is there's no way that you did not look at that daggum. There's no way it did not get approved without somebody looking at it and going, oh well. I, I don't see. think they really care. You're. You're, I think you're giving I think you're giving Crunchyroll too much credit that they actually check a lot of this stuff before they post it up. I know that that <laughs> is just flat out stupid. I I'm think whoever, sorry. I think whoever did whoever's the editor or the translator needs to be fired for sure if they even have an editor. Um, but yeah, I mean there's there's a side of me that kind of wonders if it's an aspect of them testing the waters, testing the beds. There's another side of me that's like, yeah, I I wonder if there's a little bit of a snarkiness in, yeah, like you said. This is what you asked for. You guys, this is what you guys want. This is what you want. You want, you want some machine to do it. Look what the machine did. Look what, the, look at it. Um, but that would require them to actually have somebody to come out and say, say it. Cause they have to point it out. Like you wanted this. <laughs> it requires, it requires, and you know what? It requires, I bet you they're dying to say it. <laughs> they are dying to say it. There's, they're just in there chomping at their desk. There's a hole in the side of their desk. You're chomping at the bit. Um, <laughs> This is what you wanted. Uh, is the guy that's standing outside the party looking at the window going, I got you guys. Wait till, they, <laughs> wait till they find out that I put two extra scoops of sugar in that punch. <laughs> they're so ruined. They're, they're going to be jumping off the walls here soon. Snicker, snicker, snicker. And then the light turns off. <laughs> snicker, snicker, snicker. Snicker, snicker, snicker. <laughs> cut, 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 cut. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, the the odd thing, the reason why I have this in here is one to laugh at that because I think it was a butchered job. Uh, they have re apparently replaced it. I haven't gone back to check it. Um, it broke my heart because I've been looking forward to the show a lot. This is one of my, I think it was the one that was saying that I was like the one of my most anticipated, but I wasn't like super excited for it just because it's got the whole brother thing, you know, because it's got a brothers. But anyways, um, interesting is as I'm looking back into this, apparently Crunchyroll has, has said something about this. Oh yeah. Crunchyroll told ANN on Friday that it is, quote, working with the licensor of the series, the Yuzuki family's four sons, for an updated subtitles. And we hope to have that version on our platform soon. That doesn't make any sense. It's working with the licensor. Like, working with the company that owns the property in Japan or the one that licensed it over here. Licensor tells me the person that licensed it. Right. And that's not the person that owns it. The person that owns it is the owner. The person that licensed it is somebody that is paying for a license to use it. I think you're getting it backwards. A licensor, the one that gives a license? Yes. So that, that assumes that what they're doing there is the owner of it in japan which what i'm not sure that would be let me see um if it's anaplex i'm gonna laugh <laughs> please don't be anaplex please don't be anaplex please don't be anaplex i'm clicking on it we're looking at it please don't be anaplex don't be anaplex don't need, don't be anaplex um it's a lot of people um pyro uh atx is probably gonna be the bigger one BS11, Shogo Kakon, probably a bigger one too, Avex Pictures. So one of those people, probably the, the higher ownership of it, probably, yeah, then that point would be... Why would they be... I guess there's going to be cases where they translate it, but in most cases what they do is they get a... They get a they, they get a rough yeah they get a script and, and then, then they, they, they they give it to a translator over here that translates it and then they slap the time stamps onto there or the they time it to the the subtitles. Yeah, there there's no way I don't see how this slipped through. I I, I just don't. That's why I mean I I'm I I know that I'm being snarky in the fact of uh, assigning malevolence to a to this, but there is that aspect of how there's nothing in my brain allows. I mean, I get, I get what you were saying. The the accidental. Okay, somebody running running behind on time. They needed to get it done. Yeah. Slapped it through the AI uh, translator. Throw it up there. I don't think there's I, a lot of translators that probably do use AI just for a rough translation. They then they fix it up after that because they probably have to turn this stuff out so fast. 
Yeah. I mean, I, there's a sad reality that there's a lot of these shows that probably they get the they get the script from Japan they get the, like the same day. They get the va- I I don't doubt that there's translators. That's why I said that tra- uh, machine translation can do this crap. Mm-hmm. But there it, there is that aspect of it has to be edited. There's it there's no getting around that. Yeah, I mean, um, like you're gonna have to watch that scene where he walks out there and she says, "I look angry," and it's like, yeah, change I to Y O U fixed. And then when they when he says something about them having C, your your class C has C or something like that today, which like I think that's supposed to be P E. Uh, yeah, you and it, spot that kind well, of stuff. And, and going back to the reason why I said that, um, yeah, I believe in 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 doing this with m- machine translation. I know that it's almost there. It's it's pretty much right there on the cusp. The reason why the I say one. that. The reason why I say that that we sh- need to go over to this is to take that freaking burden off of Crunchyroll so that we're not sitting here complaining about Crunchyroll put this up inside there. A machine cannot have a political bend. Yeah, well, can. technically. Yeah, the it AI can have it. technically does, yes. It technically is not supposed to have a, a political bend. So it gets that out of the, the way. And that is why I, I say that. Not because I want machines doing this crap. I want to pay somebody for their labor. But if y'all can't keep your your issues out of the 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 whatever you're doing, fine. Stop we'll put, go to a freaking computer. Stop putting uh, Twitch chat uh, jokes into the stuff like pod yeah. or no cap, <laughs> no cap. Seriously, I'm so sick. Of no, this, this is half one of the, the funnier crap ones that y'all put in these things. This is one of the funnier ones when he's talking about his parents being dead and that his fr- his is his brothers and them been living alone it says but there's nothing we can do after all there is no resurrection <laughs> he's not wrong it's not wrong <laughs> uh it's just so weird i'm sorry but yeah that's um i want to watch the show hopefully it's fixed by the time i go watch it i think episode two is supposed to be good but i don't buy that i don't buy it. they're getting the translation from the company i really don't but it is what it is. We'll just have to believe them. I, I guess it's a one a rare a rare case where they're apparently throwing the licensor on their bus. I mean, how often do we see Crunchyroll go? No, it's their fault. Again, they won't say whenever they're getting a censored version from them that it's them. That's what they got from them. They, no, they, they did that. Want, they, they did want that with us, ReZero. They, they, they did that with ReZero. They claimed that was the masters they got from ReZero. They Funimation seriously that. want us to believe that they they are helpless. That's what they want <laughs> us to believe. It's not our fault. Wait, Pete, that's what I'm saying. It's like there was a part of me that was wondering if they were doing this as a test bed because it was Yuzuki Family. Because you know that that, that you, barely anybody's gonna watch Yuzuki Family. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna probably love it. Um, but there was a side of me that was kind of like thinking that they just they probably didn't check it because they'd figured nobody's watching the stupid show anyway. So suddenly out of nowhere, everybody's talking about this, and it's like, oh crap! Hey, who's who's in charge of this Yuzuki show? Uh, I think that's it's Fred. Billy down the street. <laughs> I think that's Fred. Where's Fred? I don't know. I think he said he's off for the day. And they're just like freaking out because they're like, I didn't even know that we had this show. I thought High Dive had this show. <laughs> like, what is the Yuzuki family? Even does High Dive have this season? What is an Onimai? <laughs> What's an Onimai? They still have Dark Gathering, which is literally the best show this this season right now. Like, literally October right now. Super spooky show. It's amazing. Please go watch it. I love Dark Gathering. Uh, anyways, that's that's that. What else do I have? Sony Pictures Entertainment and Crunchyroll reached an settlement of the class action lawsuit. I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, and I made a whole video on it. But yeah, essentially, if you're hearing a lot of people talk about how Crunchyroll has lost a lawsuit, um, they didn't. Essentially, what happened was that there was a lawsuit that was brought up against them, claiming that the initial one was that there was this lady that was on Facebook, signing in at Facebook, they went and watched something on Crunchyroll, and then she claimed that that data about her watch history was sent by Crunchyroll to Funimation, so thus Funimation had that information. I'm not sure exactly how they knew that, but it's probably in the lawsuit that we probably will never see. Um, But then, over time, that got escalated with two more um amendments to it which were some other individuals that had claims that sony slash crunchyroll was giving information to adobe and uh what i'm just listening to what you're saying oh, okay adobe and uh i thought that i said something wrong because <laughs> you had that look um sony uh 
it was Adobe and something. Oh, Google. That they were giving information to Adobe and um, Google about, you know, information that people have, like your name and what you're watching. So this Google is, has all of your information already. Just get over it. <laughs> I know, right? So there's all these claims that essentially that Crunchyroll slash Sony is giving out information uh, of, of users and watch lists and all that kind of stuff. That's what the lawsuit was. Now, here's the thing that people need to keep in mind. They had this class action lawsuit. They claimed they were going to, they basically probably put together a whole list of how many users that Crunchyroll has. And they came to them saying, we want to sue you for this much. And Crunchyroll basically came to a settlement with them. Before it goes to court, they made an agreement with them outside of court, which happens a lot, by the way. It's a very common thing for essentially two parties to come together, the plaintiff and the defendant, and to say, this is what we're coming after. And the other side says, yeah, I don't think that's going to hold up in court, but at the same time, it's going to cost a boatload of money for me to tell you that you're wrong in court. So rather than pay Buko's amount of money and lawyers for several years to fight this, we're just going to pay you this much money here. It happens a lot. It, unfortunately for a lot of people, is not an admittance of guilt. It's a settlement. We're agreeing to compensate somehow to make this go away. Even having so far as Crunchyroll afterwards deny the claim and said they settled be to, quote, avoid the uncertainties and expenses associated with continuing the case. Now, when would did, I be when shocked? Did, when did settling Would become, I be sh When yeah. did settling become some kind of a amends to guilt? Amends to guilt. I don't I don't yeah, That's understand. what I don't understand. That, and that's where my this is where my frustration comes from. Again, I don't care about Crunchyroll. I have no I have no horse in the game. If Crunchyroll Sony does this, F them. I don't care. <laughs> like I I don't care. And uh, it, would it shock me? No. All these companies are doing this. All these companies are selling your information. No matter who you think you're working with, what online service, what marketplace, what store, everybody is holding and selling your information on a regular basis. Marketing people love to use your information. They love it. They love There's padding actually... their they love padding their uh achievements every year by selling your information. Every there is company a, does it. There is a system out there. Um that you can actually purchase um, what they call leads. And leads come from a lot of these these things. They what you do is you 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 as a company have a bunch of um uh you, what you think is it's it's oh, like similar Salesforce to what, things like Salesforce. Salesforce, Salesforce. yeah. That's yeah, a you, big one. you 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 say I I am looking for customers that fit in this umbrella. Yeah, and it links and you up with it, tons and, of people, and that's and, and that's, that's what they're, they're doing. Info. And they're selling these these lead what they quote unquote leads all over the place. Yeah. you are probably in like fifteen different buckets as far as leads. Um, now I fully understand by laws, which is the laws they're uh, indicating here, the Video Privacy Protection Act. They're not supposed to do that without your consent. But what are you doing a lot of the cases when you hit that agree button? You're agreeing yeah. to a lot of things. <laughs> You're yeah, agreeing you, to a you, lot of things. And, there, and they, there is ways they can stretch that. And I'm sure that Crunchyroll seen that when they presented if, this. They said, yeah, that's going to fall upon our, our agreement. And it doesn't fall within uh, going against uh, VPP. But again... They settled because they don't want to have to worry about going through court and the uncertainties that come from that. Because, yes, a, well, a, a court's not going to understand the integral details of data sharing. And they know that. Crunchyroll knows perfectly well that there's going to be no court out there that's going to understand what the Video Privacy Protection Act even does and what Crunchyroll is doing. Because it's probably as simple as an idea of like maybe a service like, like Discord. They probably you, got you, them on some kind of a catch. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. because like 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 you were saying, I and and I fully agree. There is nobody who's reading through that like entire some sort of freaking snipping. absurd. You go through that absurd little liability thing every time you hit that agree button. I mean, there's maybe five people out of every ten thousand people, and they are banking on that. There's only five people that are not not uh that are reading that entire I thing. Remember when, I remember when I used to I, actually have to scroll through big I think it was like maybe in World of Warcraft. Like the, the first time I were I really ran into a Yulo and I was like, holy crap, 
you're you're are you supposed to read all this like it literally was my first indication when the first time i signed one of those things it's like wait do, do i need to read this it's like it, and then there is it, technically laws out th there is there is a lot of case um and i'm not a lawyer by the way we, we should have probably specified that at the beginning we're not lawyers um there's a lot of cases out there where literally they can't hold you to the things that you agree in some of those things because there's an expectation of what you would assume would be in that agreement and if anything is far stretching outside of what you would assume would be in that agreement you can technically fight and that and that and that's 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 probably half of the the between this or some catch 22 because this was the the data that was rolled over from Funimation into Crunchyroll is that what we're talking about no the like i said the very first case was somebody was was signing on Facebook they watched something on Crunchyroll and something indicated that Funimation got word of their identity and what their watch history was so i'm assuming they probably went back to facebook and probably seen an ad for chainsaw man because they just watched chainsaw man on crunchyroll that's my assumption and then later on the amendments was some more individuals included into it that were that had evidence that crunchyroll is giving information to uh, to google and adobe i have no information on what those things were but those were the final things they amended to it but nothing to do with um with that no all right, and because like I said, I, I would think that that would be the probably their their easy easy win there because and it could be APIs too, and, and it's like APIs those, would make sense because APIs click -through, are click throughs and APIs like like an easy example for some people here recently with Discord they had that whole add on where you could tell Discord what you're watching on Crunchyroll. That's one of those cases where you're agreeing that it tells them that information. Again, you're probably signing agreements to tell them other things too. You just don't realize it. And again, I think there's, like you said, there's there's probably a case where they something slipped through the cracks. Something can be interpreted that that shouldn't be allowed, but it actually is. Again, in the end of the day, my whole point here, again, I'm not defending Crunchyroll. I don't care about Crunchyroll. They're, they're probably doing a lot of bad things. <laughs> but I don't like this idea of what happened when this news released. Just everybody's saying that they lost a lawsuit and they're selling your information. We don't know. That's the problem with the settlement is we don't know what... Essentially, the this is the other thing that kind of bugs me. Again, what happened is they brought this class action lawsuit to Crunchyroll, Sony, and they said, "Oh, okay, let's talk before we go to court." And they and Sony Crunchyroll said, "All right, I don't think that's really enough." And then they go, "Oh, but yeah, it's gonna be enough. We're gonna bury you for breaking the law. You broke the Privacy Act." And then they go. Well, okay, how about this much? Okay. <laughs> it's literally like, it's literally hush money. They literally took hush money to not bring them to justice. And I hate that idea that this brought them to justice. They lost the lawsuit. It's like, no. The lawyers got a bunch of money put in their pockets <laughs> while everybody in this... Yes, you can go there now until like, I don't know, sometime in December. December She probably 12th. got $500 out of it. You can get a whopping... $30 if you're a user of Crunchyroll. Thank you for being a part. Thank you for not... Here's the other funny thing. It's like the lawsuit, the class action lawsuit is about them possibly selling our information to other companies. These lawyers took me as a representative without my permission to get a larger settlement from a company to teach them a lesson. And what do I get out of it? $30. What does the lawyers get out of it? Millions. <laughs> and your information. Because you <laughs> have information. To, because you have to, to tell them who you are to get that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's like, none, none, none of this is a win. And it's like, boy, people stop acting like this is a win. <laughs> but yes, if you want your $30. And it could be more technically, depending on who. Because it, it's basically based on how many people actually sign up to get part of that pot. So if a bunch of people get into that pot, yes, it could be like 30 bucks. But if essentially i'm not sure exactly how exa exactly how it works again i'm not a lawyer less people signing up to get their settlement could mean more money so who knows maybe you can get a thousand dollars doubt it i want one million dollars million dollars it's just dumb all around i'm done talking about it i'm done talking about it it's just funny how people kind of blew that up in a ways that it it's like I'm again. I'm not a lawyer, and but I know a, I know a bit about the court system because I got at some point I got really sucked into watching um, court analysis, 
And it's like, it's so, it's so interesting to see how it actually works. I mean, the Vic Mignogna situation, I, I poured through that stuff and it was so fascinating how that stuff works. It's super, it's super weird. And in a lot of cases, in a lot of, in a lot of court cases that I've watched, it's kind of scary in a sense too. It's really scary when you look into how the court system works, especially how jury system works. So anyways, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not, I'm not an attorney spokesperson. (laughs) I I was going to say on the on the settlement thing it it that's a, that's also both ways. So uh, it's not an admission of guilt and it's not an uh a admission of defense, yeah. Yeah, it's not a yeah, exactly. Not it's guilty not, or or uh, innocent. It's uh, it's neither. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a settlement. <laughs> you came to a settling of the situation and and guess what? Judges love that. They actually very much so recommend the parties before they even start Please find a settlement. Just come to an agreement. Don't waste our time. They, the judge loves that. <laughs> they actually push that stuff sometimes. Well, and that, they and that, want that, you to come a, to an agreement. Well, that, and that, that's an interesting way of put, putting it. Come to a settlement. It is is literally don't make me right. choose a side. That's, that's, the that's literally what it is. So, yeah, again, a prosecutor, defender. They come to the court. They say, court, I want to get this guy on this thing. Okay, okay sign this papers. All right, do you really want to do this? Because what's going to happen is you're going to come in here and I'm going to decide or a jury's going to decide who's right and who's wrong. Or you can decide upon yourself how you want to resolve it. You can either have me force you to resolve it or you can come to the agreement yourself. Mm-hmm. It's really what it is. It's like a, yeah, an am- 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 amicable agreement. Anyways, boring lawyer stuff, moving on. A Twitter account for Comic Earth star announced... The un- um, unemployed hero does not need something like skills is getting an anime adaptation. Uh, yeah, this one, classes are, quote-unquote, classes are given to at the age of 10. And the pr- uh, presence or absence of skills greatly affects life. Errol, the son of sword princess Farah and magic king Leon, has been branded as classless. But even without jobs and skill or skills... Errol believes he can persevere through effort. I bet he's going to have a cheat skill. It's, it's like he has no skills. We'll have a cheat skill. Look, you see, even he's got zappy zappies around him. He's going to have a skill. Why act like he doesn't have a skill and then give him a skill? The lack there of skills is means skill. I don't know. He's going to have rock throw. You think it's one of those things where, like, because he doesn't have a skill, his stats are boosted? No, he's, he's going to have rock throw. That could be. Because did, Glassless has rock throw. They always have rock throw. We had that with the, the my sister's OP. Uh, sister's two hit combo strikes yeah. attack thing. He was, was classless and he had rock throw. This was excited. I actually like this one. I don't like the main character's voice though. He's kind of annoying, but still. A website was announced, uh, open to announce a TV anime adaptation of the manga. My stu- uh, studio apartment, good lighting, angel included. Taro uh, Tokumitsu is a high schooler living all alone when he encounters a pure and kind girl named Toa on his balcony. But who is she really? Uh, Matoba, author of as a Miss Bills. Oh, it's the author of uh, Miss Bills Bills Likes. Interesting. Brings you a romantic, an innocent romantic comedy. So, yeah, studio apartment that comes free with an angel. It's a new, it's a new waifu for Andrew to hate. I hate I, I hate waifus. Yeah, you hate the new the the perfect waifu characters. I don't remember that. <laughs> Girl, the the galaxy next door. Um, the uh, 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 my uh, that's my literally neighbor, it. My, <laughs> my neighbor my neighbor pampers me or something like that. That's literally the same <laughs> show. <laughs> it's literally the same show. You you just took the first part of the show, which is the angel next door, and then you took the other part of the show, which is spoils me rotten, and put it in a different show. <laughs> it's the same show, Chris. <laughs> which, by the way, is getting a second season. We got another. <laughs> we got a new a, a new one. Studio apartment. It's the it's the same show. But she's an angel. She's like, an angel. But no, see that show. She's not actually an angel. She's just a boring girl. <laughs> this show. She's legit a cute angel. I don't know that he spoils a rotten. She's just there with her cute wings. I don't know. The, the hair, her hairstyle is not like the greatest, but he looks stupid. His design, I'm sorry, his design looks stupid. Look at, he looks like a kappa. 
He looks like a kappa. <laughs> he looks like a kappa. Maybe his story is that he's a kappa. Now, I will admit, I wasn't the biggest fan of Miss Beelzebub Likes. I actually didn't finish that show. I got like through two episodes and I got bored because that was the one where like, if I remember correctly, it was on the one at the very end of the, basically Bill's above. She was like super lazy and she just wanted to sleep. And like half the show is literally you're going fluff, fluff and like this fluffy world wanting to sleep. And it was like, okay, this is boring. And I stopped watching it. And like the, yeah, they had like the friend guy and stuff like that or something like that. Ketabus. And he was like some crazy dude. Seems it, was, like- it was boring in this show. It was mm-hmm. a very boring. So you didn't like it. That's, that's going to be a difficulty is this is. Hopefully the writing's got better. Or to my liking, I'm sorry. It's a better way of putting it. But yes, jokes. I don't know if Chris seen this, but yes, Angel Next Door spoils me rotten is getting a second season. Um they have there announced that. So I know how much Chris loved that show and he'll be can't wait to watch the second season. Oh, that's right, you didn't finish it all. Nope. Apparently Andrew hates these shows, but Chris didn't even watch it. No, Moving I just, on. I it was <laughs> in a very bad timing th- the, the, thing. The writing we'll that show was so weird. It was nothing to do with her. The writing's just the character writing was weird. The the this writer or the anime maybe the script writer sucks, but because I no I I heard from very trusted sources that the light novel is just as weird with its writing. This person I think just does not know how to write people talking to each other. Anyways, what else do we have? Um. Now, Crunchyroll added discotheque media titles to its catalog. Angel Cop, Black Rock Shooter, Cyber City, Oida, um, Oido, uh, 808, Gunbuster, been... The King of Braves, Ga- Gao Gai Gar, and King of Braves, Gai- Gao Gai Gar, Final, and Mononoke. But that last one's pretty good. I've been seeing all kinds of crap showing up on my Roku, th- so I'm, I'm, I just assumed it was the Funimation stuff moving over. So, Chris. What's that? Theory time. Okay, uh, I want, you can have I want a all the theories yes you no. want. I want a yes or no from you. you want, why am I involved in your damn theory? Within six months. Uh, that's that's a little bit too loose. Within, yeah, we'll go, we'll go six months. I think I feel comfortable with that. Within six months, Crunchyroll buys Discotech. I think this is a sign. They're buying them. I, I think that I lit- Crunchyroll is literally playing nice with nobody right now. But suddenly they get disco test tiles. They've kicked. They've literally lost pretty much Sentai Filmworks. I don't think it really any other brands. There's there's probably a couple other brands on there. I think they're buying them. I think they're in the process right now of buying them. I think they just want. I just they just want their titles to throw on there, and they're gonna just kick them out, buy up the licenses, shut them down. I don't know. That's possible. It seems like if if I'm going based on their past, it's they they usually act like they're being really mean to them, and then suddenly all of a sudden it's <laughs> a random. Oh hey, we we bought we we've got this this deal going through. It's like wait wait yeah I thought y'all hated each other so but I don't know. So they like, like smacks discotheque around and then eventually they go, come on home. And they go, yes, daddy. <laughs> it's like some kind of abusive father. <laughs> Crunchyroll is like an abusive father. <laughs> Poor discotheque just wants to play ball with his friends and dad just keeps yelling at him. And so he listens to what he says. And then eventually he bakes, I think he that bakes him a cake I think, for his birthday and he cries. I think that they, I mean, how, how much, how much more can Sony I honestly How, thought because uh, because there I will admit that for a while I've been of the mindset because I, I I talk with a couple people on Discord on a regular basis about theories and stuff like that and um, one is very adamant about the idea like every time some company sneezes immediately they say Crunch is going to buy them that's like with with High Dive he this person is convinced that they're going to buy High Dive and I'm like but they don't need to Crunchyroll literally doesn't need to. They have all the power they need. And their theory was on the idea that, that High Dive was losing licenses. And it's like, if they're prime, they're obviously hurting. It's time for them to buy them up. No. They don't need to. They can let them die. But they yeah. need their licenses. But nobody watches older shows. Why would they need their licenses? Now, granted, I'm set, I say that, and I just said this about them. But they're putting their title on their platform. Probably because they're cheap enough. Eh, that much? Sure. <laughs> get out of here. 
Give me, give me your license. Yeah, they have all the power. That's 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 why I, at this at this point, um, Crunchyroll is all they have to do is just start. And that's why I was asking the question: Do you how far how much more can Sony handle? It is massive. Don't get me wrong. But they're they're swallowing up some very unstable things at the moment. There, there is a lot of fear with how big they're getting. Um, and I do. And I, usually, why I push back on the idea of them buying up any other companies right now is just mainly the idea that because of they're how a massive debt they're. company. Yeah, Crunchyroll is a debt company. As much as people want to claim it's a multi-billion-dollar company, no, it's a multi-billion debt company because it costs them money and they're in the negative right now, and they're digging out of that. And yeah, they're probably making some of that money act by selling your information. <laughs> it's a joke. Um, allegedly. You have to say that. I forgot. You're supposed to say allegedly. Um, yeah, they're a massive debt company. But it's, that is one of those things where if they can see that they can increase that profits to get rid of that debt quicker by spending a little extra money, they'll do it. Why, why buy right stuff when they were a massive debt company? Because they've seen an opportunity to cut some of their losses. The biggest thing you people have to know about the whole buyout of right stuff is that what happened is Sony came in those doors at Crunchyroll and said, um, so we were wondering who's doing the store stuff. Oh, that's the department. They go over that department and they go, where are you keeping this stuff? You guys have a massive store. Where are you keeping this stuff? Oh, we're keeping it right stuff. Okay. Give me your ledger. <laughs> Let me see. What are you paying to do that? And they look at this, this list of like how much they're getting made. They're going, okay, you sold a Blu-ray here. What's this number? Oh, that's how much Crunchyroll gets or Right Stuff gets from the, the cut. Why are we paying them? Because they're warehousing it. Okay, there's all these negatives. You're not making any money because you're having Right Stuff do it for you. Let's buy them. And then all these negatives become positives because we basically pay ourselves in a sense. It's it's logical. It's a, again a quick oof when you're already down in the negative. To get that to go positive faster. That's why they bought right stuff. Anyway, sorry. I had no idea. I, I just was saying, <laughs> how, at, at what point does Sony pull back a little bit? Because... Oh, yeah. It, as it stands right now, Sony Sony is huge. Um, they can handle a certain, certain level of um, unstability. Instability. In, instability. <laughs> Instable. They can handle it to a certain extent because they have such a massive um, just engine co constantly turning out the money. So they can handle it to an extent. But they're only going to do so much. And just going around gobbling up little itty bitty companies, after a certain point... that You're doing they, nothing but digging yourself in a hole. Yeah. You got you got to show signs that you're digging back out at some point, otherwise you're just digging in there. Anyways, that's all the news that we have for you guys. It's all the news that seems important to us. It should be important to you because it's important to us. It's important to you. Um, community questions. It's been a while. Uh, again, talkiespare.com. That's where our links are. Ways to get a hold of us. And again, there's a link to our Discord. We have a channel called Submit Question. You're only supposed to submit your questions there. You don't talk in there like bad people. The Discord do. Uh, but yeah, that's the way to get a hold of us and ask us questions. And we greatly appreciate everybody that sends us questions because it makes it's free content. Let's just say it is free content. <laughs> um, so let me scroll through and figure out what the first question is because people are talking to each other. So who are you top Sundetes? There's a good, there's a new question. What is your top Sundetes? For the longest time, I think for me was Shakuga no Shana, uh, Shana. Taiga was probably mine. Taiga's a really good one, yes. Um, currently, right now, if you ask me, like, the new me, probably Edis. I'm really a big fan of Edis now. Granted, she's not technically a Sundere, but it's because the writing's good that it's not the sum of being a Sundere, but she's technically classified as Sundere. Um, I think, technically, my current favorite is probably Beatrice. I just freaking love her. She is just such a perfect... From which show? Rezero. Oh. Yeah, I guess Biako's Biako's just technically Sunday. freaking awesome. I <laughs> love it. I adore her. She is I would, so I, I would in my mind when it if when I think of Rezero Sunday, I immediately think of Ram, but yeah, I guess that yeah. 
I guess. Because <laughs> Fiaco could be. I don't know. That's a, I would have to actually think about that. I don't know that she, she is absolutely is. Sundere. She is so Sundere. I guess. Yeah, I guess. I guess. <laughs> God, what? There, it's, it just, I mean, there's a lot of Sundere characters, but like standouts, it's, it's very hard to find them. I, I think that's why I like Sundere characters so much is that when they do hit, they just work so well. Yeah. Like right now, technically we have one for 100 Girlfriends and she's, 100 Girlfriends, she's, she's, she's absolutely fantastic. fantastic. She got a little violent, which I was hoping that she wouldn't be a violent one, but she. I just love the that show. Cat. That, lo- that the, show, the I'm got rolling all every episode that she'll get. I'm so, I laugh so hard on that show. It's perfect. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, I, I guess it's the big ones. Taiga, Shauna, pretty much anything Rikajimia uh, is going to be fantastic. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, Asuka Langley Shoyo, obviously. I I didn't really care much for her back when I watched it. I was kind of into Ray a little bit, but then I, I grew up. And then I realized that Ray's a little bit nothing. <laughs> She's kind of a she's kind of a block character, uh, and I started falling in love with Asuka over time. Like it's so funny how my taste in that show of the characters kind of shifted because I know I hated Shinji at first. Um, I really loved Ray. I I was I kind of found Asuka a little bit too much for me back then. I really liked uh, Misato, and then like over time, it's like suddenly I understand Shinji as a character a lot more, and I give him a lot more a lot more leeway, and then I I suddenly like Asuka. Probably because somebody else is a, technically his mom. <laughs> it's your mom, dude. Everybody's uh, your mom in that show. <laughs> technically, everybody's your mom, except for your dad. <laughs> except for your dad. <laughs> um, did I have one? I think I have one on my mouth. Um, I think I have some other Sunday days on my on my mouth. I, I can't really think of anything else off the top of my head. Um, dude, let's do a Google search for top Sunday days. That's always a good way to do it. Um, who is a Sundete character in Monogatari? Is there a Sundete character? In, would, it, would, yes, would that be technically? Uh, would that uh, be uh, that Kambaru? Be the, no, the Scissor Girl. Oh, Shinji Kahara? Shinji Kahara, yeah. No. Yeah, she's technically I guess, Sundete. I guess. I she guess. just was a Sundete that gave in really, 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 really freaking easy. Oh, there you go. Ren Tosaka. I don't know why it took me for... I forgot Ren Tosaka. She's definitely up there. Way up there. Number one? Yeah. I would I would probably say Ren Tosaka. I mean, Edis might take it over eventually, but yeah, Ren Tosaka is definitely going to be my number one right now. I really like her, so... She definitely... they She definitely fits the bill. Let's see what Google says. I'm really curious what Google says. Every time I soon, every time I do a Google search for a different archetype, I I hate it. It always turns out to be bad. Uh, girl from Maitama, Gintama. Yeah, I could probably see me liking her character if I ever watch it. Uh, we got Asuka. Oh, Urza Scarlet. Urza. No. No. I mean, nah. No. She's just very. She's a dork. She's not a Sundene. I don't think I've I ever would seen not her put her in it. I would not put her in. I mean, I guess I could see it a little bit, but I would not put her in the Sundene. She's category. just a, she's meathead. She's total meathead. She is a meathead. Yeah. She doesn't realize what she's doing. She's a total meathead. Obviously, everybody wants to do this grueling thing. Apparently, a okay, jo- apparently there's a JoJo <laughs> reference. <laughs> apparently, apparently Sundene is a JoJo reference. <laughs> Yes, he yeah, is absolutely a Sundere. Yeah, uh, Inuyasha. Uh, what the koi? I... No? Hirotaka? No, I don't remember. I don't think so. Chitoge, question mark, Chris? Yes, absolutely. Okay. She is Dekoi. full on Sundere. Oh, come on. Ishida from Bleach. Diana Fire. S- Saitama is a what is this list? <laughs> what is this list? I think we left the Sundere list somewhere. No, it's st- it's still in it. Yeah, Taiga's in there, so obviously. Uh yeah, technically uh Kyosoma from Food's Basket. He's totally. Levi Ackerman, I guess, yes, very violent Sundere. Is left from Plastic Memories? What? 
I think she did like a pouty face one time. I don't know. <laughs> Irina did from Food face. War, yes. She did a pouty face once. She, yeah, she, she puffed her cheek up one time and was like, bam, Sundere, she's going to the list. I like plastic memories. <laughs> Greatest Sundere ever. Because she puffed her I, face. I, I, I swear these like main publications and stuff, whenever they do these like top lists for anime shows, it's like they'll just try to figure out how many lists they can make of these certain shows because it's the only shows they ever watched. There's gotta be a there's gotta be a Sundetti character in Plastic Memories. I'm running out of shows to put a list in. Anyways, yeah, that's uh, that that's that's that. Sundetti's are great. I love Sundetti characters. We'll always love them. And it's, when did I start liking Sundetti's? You were you were on the early Ben with. I think it was Shauna. I think it was Rika Kajimia and Shauna when I got I... big binge fest of of Rika Kajimia shows with like Shaka and Shauna, um, Familiar of Zero. What was the other one? The Comet Butler, she was the main girl in that one too, which was Sundere. I wasn't big on Sundere's until kind of more recently. I I was more in the Dandere, um, Kudere area. I I still really really have a soft spot for those, but I I I appreciate Sundere's. I think that they I think are. The, I think the only Sundere's I don't like is when they're way too hyper violent. I just I don't like it when it's their whole joke is punching the main character across the hallway every two seconds, which is like yeah, that was partly why I, I was being that a little bit uneasy with this recent episode of Hundred Girlfriends. But it was it was literally because she was blindfolded and she freaked out. Okay, come on. Yeah, <laughs> I, I there's there's something there's something about that I just love. Their in, in a lot of cases they're kind of I I've always been big on awkward vibes so. When these characters they're super awkward, yeah, and and they, they are the they ones burst that are, out because they're awkward. They can't figure out the situation. And that, I like and that. It, fr- I like that frazzleness. Yeah, like crap. I don't know what to do. So push away. Yeah, I like it. it's cute. I mean, that's literally what she's doing in Hundred Girlfriends. Is like she keeps crap. What do I do? Push. Yeah, I don't want to be part of this. The other one's getting ahead of me. Got to do something. <laughs> I got to force myself to get involved, and then get angry, <laughs> and then say I'm not doing it for you, Babaka. Babaka. It's cute. It's cute. Uh, Yari says, "Do do I did I mention Godaku was the one that last question? Sorry." Um, Yari says, "Do waifus make anime great?" Yes. Uh, are they any? Are there any top rated anime out there that you don't that don't have any at all? Um, when I think of greatest of all time anime, I immediately think of characters like Roxy, um, Mika, uh, oh Kurisu, uh, Hoshino I, etc. Therefore, better waifus equals better show. Okay. Yes. I'm, no. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna fix this problem right now. Do it, Chris. Um, don't be mean. What was the uh, the the Yin don't be show? Mean. Um, the Yin show. The Gin show. The Gin um, show. Um, Gin. The 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 spirit things that. Yeah. Dude, dude was walking. Mushishi. And he Mushishi. Yes. No wife is in that show. I mean, Gin's pretty hot, dude. He is pretty freaking Ginko. hot. Ginko. He's, he's pretty hot. He's he's freaking hot. Who's Gin? I I I just got Gin. He's probably Gin. All I had. It's silver. Gin. Either way, it's silver. Um, well, my ten out of ten shows that don't have waifus. There's technically a waifu in show again, Roku Raku Shinju, but I wasn't really like that into her. I was into her character, not really as a waifu. Yeah. Bunny Drop, no waifu. Um, from the New World didn't really have waifus for me personally. Um, Grave of the Fireflies, no waifus. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure somebody could find something, maybe a background character that was waifu, uh, that was running across the street or something like that. Made in the Abyss, no waifus. I mean, Ozen's pretty cool. Was her name? Ozen? What was her name? Was it Ozen? Yeah. A crazy psycho chick? No, she's not waifu. I'm just joking. <laughs> Kiki's Delivery Service, no waifus. Um, I have a lot of shows that I don't find odd taxi, no waifus. I mean the dancing um chick was pretty funny, but she's not waifu for me. Blueferic Blue, no waifu. I mean, I do have plenty of shows that do have waifus in it, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely not all of them. I, I think what it kind of goes down to again what we talked about here recently again with our um I don't know what we called that last podcast. This idea of the pillars and the idea that a show has to have these pillars. And if you don't have at least like, I think we came down to two of them and at least two of these pillars, it's not going to, it's not going to stay up. Right. And that really comes down to like having a good story or good characters or a 
world building, something that keeps it alive. And yes, characters sometimes can be waifus. Now, I don't, 10 out of 10 shows for me are not just because the girl hot. I've yet, I don't, none of my shows in my 10 out of 10 list is because hot waifu. Like, I don't have Mashuko Tensei in my 10 out of 10 just because of Roxy. <laughs> as much as I love her to death, she's in one and a half episodes. <laughs> like, I can't do it. a whole show as a 10 out of 10 because of Roxy's presence in a couple episodes. Actually, she had two and a half episodes or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's it's it helps. Because typically, at least for me, I mean, yes, there's a lot of cases where I like a show because it's got a cute waifu character in it. But the rest of the show's garbage, but I keep watching it because the waifu character. But I won't give it a 10 out of 10 just for that. So it has to have a lot of things. And I think where the 10 out of 10 shows is where they find that balance of not just letting the waifu be the sum of just being an archetype, but actually having a great story that sells you on more than just a character design or personality, but having a lot of depth to the characters that ends up making it a a goat, as you say. As Yari says, a goat. What's your thoughts? I don't know anymore. Did I just talk it to the point where you don't remember the original question? <laughs> Do waifus make anime great? Do you think wife better waifu equal better show? Oh no, I I I, I said uh, Mushishi. Um, oh, you're giving an example of that. Mushishi is an example of a show that doesn't need waifus. Yeah, I there there, there is plenty of shows that don't necessarily need it. Um, I I personally I love I love my waifus, so I go for it. Um, I personally love my wife who's unlike I love my wife who's some people around here. Unlike some people. <laughs> um you but people, no, I don't know. You wife who haters? Yeah, you wife who haters, uh, i.e. uh girlfriend next door or galaxy next door and I uh, you know, all these shows that Andrew hates on because they have waifus. Um no. <laughs> she's not a waifu, she's just a neighbor. I, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> shows, fun. shows are good. I, I watch anime. shows are good. <laughs> shows are good. I like anime. <laughs> it's like this guy's like, Hey, I got a question for you. Uh, talk to spirit. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, man. Uh, yes. Uh, so I was wondering about the deep intricles details of the, uh, fathoming of the galaxy and the universe and how it affects the circular circulation of the earth and the spirits of each and each individual and how it interconnects <laughs> between the deeper aspects are good. of your souls and I'm waiting how they for you. to them. I know. Um, so I'm what do you, for what do you think, Chris? What do you think about this, Chris? Shows are good. Shows are good. I didn't think about that. Thank you, <laughs> Chris. Thank you. I'm going to go get a different job now because <laughs> I realize how stupidly overcomplicated this massive research project I've been doing about the integral details of universe and the laws of physics because shows are great. And anime girls are cute. <laughs> anime girls are cute. I like when she giggles. <laughs> Have you watched Star Dust Telepath yet, Chris? What? Uh, no, it's it got a cute girl. It's <laughs> super freaking cute. <laughs> I think there's a story in there about this girl having struggles with, you know, communicating to other people and she feels she's an outsider of the society and that she's an alien that needs to be taken off to space because she can only tell she can communicate through her mind to, to aliens because they talk in telepathy. But she's cute. <laughs> okay, and this then show is fun. I don't care. I just want cute girls. <laughs> just want cute girls. <laughs> We're live on scene as Chris has been arrested for, <laughs> for we don't know. We're we're it's still being we're still trying to process, but he's being taken away in cuffs. Chris, Chris, what happened? What happened to you? <laughs> the girls are cute. <laughs> Anime waifu for life. <laughs> Anime's great. I want to go to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the anime characters are at. <laughs> what are we talking about? Also, Atari, Yari also says, also, how much do you cook at home and how would you rate your culinary skills? I probably am. I'm no, very average. I, I am very, very low on the uh, Soma. You probably. work at a place <laughs> where they cook food for people and you're below average. <laughs> They're not teaching you anything over there? There's no cute waifus! They're not cute waifus. <laughs> the, the, the restaurant's not cute enough. <laughs> I told them to turn it on the TVs at the bar. 
but they won't listen to me. <laughs> no, they want to keep watching football. <laughs> Why don't they watch, like, I don't know, Ice Shield or something football show? <laughs> There's no cute waifus. <laughs> There's no cute waifus. There's probably some side characters. You gotta have the flowers in the sports shows. Um, What was the question? Oh, I right, don't know. I'm average, I'm average culinary skills. Um, I, I don't think I'm terrible, but at the same time, I'm not going to be a chef anytime soon. I've been, I've been getting better because I used to just throw together something blah and just be done with it. But um, I have somebody that I need to take care of on a daily basis to make sure he's fed. So, yeah. What's, what's this question? Let me see if this is an easy one. I guess Vione says, why do you think... I like how this is wrote because it's got the caps letters. Why do you think some people hate spoilers and <laughs> I don't know why your mind immediately reads caps as, like, louder. Um, anyway, some people think hate spoilers and some others enjoy or it's enhanced their experience of the show. Why do people hate spoilers? Because it ruins the suspense or what is around the corner that you should not know about. If you're walking down a hallway and you know that when you turn the corner there is a horrific beast, you're going to turn the corner and know there's a horrific beast rather than turning the corner and going, Crap! Surprise! It's a, it's a horrific beast! Whereas, I th I don't understand people that like spoilers because I don't. Um, but I, from what I gather from most people, I don't know that necessarily enhances their experience, but rather gives them a reason to want to continue. A lot of people will get spoilers just because they want to find out if there's anything good in the story they want to go after, they want to seek out. I think some people like to be part of the discussion, so they'll they'll accept the spoilers so that they can jump into a conversation easier. Um, I've never heard of anybody explain as they actively seek out spoilers for every se series they watch because it enhances their experience when they're watching it. I don't. I don't, I don't understand know that, that I would say that it enhances the experience. Okay, I'm fr from a perspective of somebody who used to like spoilers. Now, so take this as a person who no longer likes uh, said spoilers. I he's been recovered. I am recovered. Okay, um, the best way I can explain it is going into usually digging. I get interested in something. I want to know something about said thing. And so I go digging into that particular thing to f understand it. Now, I could technically go through the entire process of the entire show or story, or whatever have you, and get to that point. But usually somebody's already dug into it, and the question that I'm interested in is in that said spoiler Yeah, that's section. like a case where you just don't want to do the journey. Yeah, I, mean, I want we, to know about this particular thing right here. Yeah, like so, you, don't, you don't feel like you... Like, in, in particular, it, Game, it of Thrones, Game of Thrones is, is notorious for that. I think it, it's, it's a really significant thing in anime, because like for the longest time, and it, it's still a present deal issue obviously um is this idea that whenever you watch a show and you're like oh okay that i really like that show um i hope he gets with said waifu and you're like but i know this show is never gonna get another season and it's probably gonna have a manga that goes on for you know five, six seasons worth so i know that i'm not gonna get another season i don't want to read the manga so what, what am i gonna do find out who he gets with yeah that's a i, I can see that being a thing but again, that's you circumventing reading it because you don't want to. The you don't want to read. You don't want to do the journey. <laughs> yeah, and, and I and can see that. It's it. I it's, mean, like um, um, couple couple of cuckoos, cuckoos. <laughs> Jump with that stupid talk conversation again. Couple of cuckoos. Um, <laughs> I can see that being a case because I I'm bored of that show. I can easily see, just out of random curiosity, who's he get with. Because, again, I don't care for the story, and I don't think I'm ever going to read it, and I'm never going to probably watch any more seasons well, of it. Well, I think that it, it, it works better for um, massive storyline-type story uh, shows. Like Rent so, a Girlfriend? I'll probably just want to be curious who he gets with at the end, but I'm probably never going to read it. If we sure. already know who's going to end up with well, yeah, I don't <laughs> even want to think about it. Uh, but, again, we um, got to find out if he's not going to end up dead on a boat. Yeah. And, he gets, and, she, gets, <laughs> and she gets with the author instead. <laughs> That'll probably happen. I, I'm, or she I'm stays more, single more for life that. because she loses him because he doesn't want her to get with anybody. That way, the figures continue to sell. But no, the um, 
I, I think it works better on massive type stories. Like, like for instance, like I said, Game of Thrones, um, it's massive. Well, I remember we were d- doing that a lot with um, Bleach back in the day, um, digging into just intricate little uh, mechanics that are involved in that world. I'm, I'm sure that there's probably fandoms that have dug into some of the other franchises like uh, Dragon Ball. God knows, I doubt that there's that much depth in there, but I'm sure there is some. Um, but yeah, I, I know that uh, I'm pretty sure Hunter Hunter has a, a pretty massive fandom that is dug into all the intricacies of that one. So each one of those, the bigger franchises can handle that kind of stuff. So that, that that's where all of your spoilerish type junk is going to be. Now, how? Why have I? quote unquote uh recovered because at some point um there was i was listening to a podcaster and they went off on a random tangent about such and such spoiler and totally dumped a what i thought was a pretty big bombshell on me and it had in it was in reference to um um evangelion and it was such a massive thing that it really it really ticked me off to the to the extent of if it was true i was not going to uh go in at the time it wasn't um available it was a massive enough of a spoiler that if it was true i didn't want to know about it mm-hmm. and if it was not true it really ticked me off because it made me think that it was going to happen in the show. Um, and it, it, it really, really made me mad. And I, and I stopped and I thought about it of if something this, uh, if I looked at every show from that angle of, if I was the person who was listening to me talk about, Assuming said, that people want spoilers. Yeah. Um, if I just as blatantly blew, uh, threw out something that I don't know how sensitive a person is to a spoiler, it doesn't matter. Um, but obviously, this person didn't think that whatever he said was that important. It's Otherwise, been long he wouldn't enough. have. Huh? It's it's been out long enough, Chris. Yeah, it, it was. It's been out <laughs> long enough. Well, it was. It wasn't, it wasn't out yet, but it's gonna. It's been out long enough. Yeah, it wasn't. It now. wasn't in that particular Evangelion season. It, it was. It was at the time. It was the, the when movies. they were doing the remakes. Yeah. Um, but he, he, he obviously didn't think it was that big of a Unless deal. To podcast back in the nineties. <laughs> But he didn't really obviously care that, that it, it was mentioned and, and and but it did affect well, me because it was a very, very massive important thing that I was seeing in that show. And for that to be spoiled made me very, very upset. It really ticked me off. And so I just thought of it from that perspective of if I was just somebody listening to me and something just slipped out and it may or may not be in that person's um, level of sensitivity to that spoiler, I'm very much making them upset about something that they might really, really enjoy. Yeah, I think there's a difference of what you feel enhances your enjoyment out of spoilers and what you feel other people's do. Because, yeah, I always want to assume that people don't want to know about things. And, you know, obviously we're still talking about things. So obviously we're still spoiling things. It's just... No, trying to navigate what is acceptable for a large audience of what could be because I, I do a lot of obviously every season I do a lot of first impressions videos where I go over one to four episodes worth of a show before I talk about it and so at the opening of the episode I go here's my impressions of you know insert episodes and I go through a quick synopsis to give people an idea what happens in those first episodes to give them an idea what the show's about and then I talk about my impressions on it and I'll still get comments, and I don't know if they could be trolling, but I still get a lot of comments that are like, oh my gosh, spoilers! And it's like, that it's a first impressions of this mini episode. I'm going to tell you what happens in this, because that's what I do here. And I tell you, let's tell you what it's about first. Um, and how do you know it's spoilers unless you know what happens? I don't know. It's it's kind of it's kind of silly. But no, like I said, I, I think the only thing that I can't really answer in that question is how it enhances it because i don't i don't i can't think of anything that enhances it unless like i said one you don't plan on 
reading it and you know that the anime is not going to continue and you just want to know what happens at the end of the source material, you want to know which girl he gets with or whatever, um, I can see it possibly being a way of, I guess, re-sparking your interest. Like if you're like, man, this is a really boring show. Does it ever get any good? And you might seek out to find out where it might get to a hook. You might find, you might look into seeing what the hook is and then somebody will say, yeah, because Frederick dies and you're like, holy crap, the king of the country of this isekai dies to the main character kills him that might that might spur you to want to actually check it out but i don't know i don't know how if you like it you would want to know a spoiler because it would enhance it that, that's the part that doesn't make sense to me but different folks different strokes like i said the only thing that i i could think of was just the looking into things and just getting Theory, theory crafting per se. Because it, you're a masochist. Yeah, it, you like theory to be crafting punished. per se. Otherwise, you like to be punished. <laughs> I was a bad boy, and I like getting spoilers to punish me. <laughs> Anyways, that's uh, that's all the questions we're gonna do for now. But uh, again, if you if you want your questions asked, go to the talkyspirit.com, or I guess still have discord.talkyspirit.com. It might be still a link. Um, if not, again, talkyspirit.com. There's a link there. Also, my Twitter feed. Um, or my Twitter profile, uh, twitter.com or x.com slash otaku spirit hid or youtube.com slash otaku spirit. I think it's there too. Anyways, uh, you can go there, submit questions, all that good stuff. Thank you guys for submitting questions. And again, thanks to everybody that's been listening and supporting us to monetarily Patreon tips, links, all that good stuff. We really appreciate you guys support checking out the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash otaku spirit and all that good stuff. And until the next time, I think we'll probably come back for, First impressions are we'll do music. If I can get a chance to put together music, it's 70 shows to go through. It's going to be a very difficult one this time around. Uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll, maybe I might give Chris like a uh, get Chris to tell me which ones he spots, and then I'll just cross those on off my list, not to have to check. Mm -hmm. Maybe he'll maybe he'll submit some this time. I think the one for oh the Stardust Telepath one was really good. I like that OP. It's very it's very key like. It's very key opening. Very fun. Cute. We just, we just watched the Undead Unluck one. Unluck. I'm... St I swear to goodness, if I say Undead Unluck or Unluck, I, I just I said Unluck. Gonna, I think that's gonna happen. I'm literally... Just gonna I happen. just literally did it. It's just gonna happen. I did a whole video, first impressions of Undead Unluck. Unluck. And said Unluck the entire time. And I'm like, why is my brain say Undead Unluck? No, I didn't say it, so I'm gonna stick with it. I'm not gonna correct it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of this podcast. <laughs> you learned that Andrew has a problem with saying undead unluck. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this podcast episode. And thank you all for listening. Hope you all enjoyed. And you all take care. Os.